He came to basic. We lit tonight. Y'all come through, man. Y'all know how we gonna show up and show out. See y'all all in the building. Yo, what's good with y'all, man? What's happening with y'all? It's your boy Knockout Boxing 86 TV, KO Knockout Boxing. Knockout Boxing 86, KO 86. Whatever you want to call me, man, it's the king of this shit, man. This boxing talk shit. We here, bro. We here. Welcome to another episode of Knockout Boxing 86 TV. Salute to everybody in the building early. Appreciate y'all sliding through. Bullet, I see you in the chat, homie. This first topic going to be for you, bro, so you stay right where you at. This first topic that we're talking about tonight is just for Bullet Gibson. Look, I'm only on smoke tonight. I'm going to talk my shit. You know what I mean? I got a lot of things I want to talk about, a lot of different topics I want to get to with the state of boxing, the biggest names in boxing and where they stand at. And if anybody want it, we can get it. If anybody want it, we can get it, bro. Ain't no, ain't no open panel. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no waiting until I open up the panel. Then you want to go against my points? No, sir. No, ma'am. If you want smoke, you can hit the link. Otherwise, I'm cooking for three hours straight. Well, two hours and forty five minutes straight. We not hiding on panels tonight, bro. Cause I got some real shit I gotta say. And sometimes y'all come up here and I try to let people cook and let people talk and shit, which is cool. I love y'all. Y'all know it's all love. You know what I mean? But this one of them days I need to cook. This one of them days I need to put in some work, bro. And and D free, I saw the homie D free in the building. Yeah, bro, bet every year. You can fuck about y'all got no Bobby Wagner, bro. You can know about the Eagles having no Saquon Barkley. Yes, bro. We it's every year, bro. Till me and you ain't cool no more, and I don't see that shit ever happening. You too real for that. I got too much respect for you, dog. Yes, we on, D, D Free. You don't even have to ask, bro. You don't even have to ask. I lose, I'm paying. You ain't had to ever ask me again, bro. But let me catch these super chats and I'm going to see who we got in the building. Shout out Emmanuel Carter. Five piece, no biscuit early in this. Five piece, no biscuit early in this. Bitch. He say nothing. Just hit go five bucks. Okay, appreciate you, Emmanuel Carter. Matty Yoel coming through heavy. Starting off the show right. Boom. piece no biscuits in the super chat hi ko86 hi chat what's up maddie i appreciate your super thanks super chats your membership man you one of the guys that's the lifeblood of the channel man all y'all are but i'd be remiss and i'd be lying to y'all if i if, and i wouldn't be myself if i didn't tell you man i'm trying to make this shit full time i'm working my ass off to bring y'all content to be consistent so that 
I can get to a point where I can do what I love for a living and not just as a side hustle. So I appreciate all you guys that support the channel, man, from the bottom of my heart. Me and my family appreciate you. A1 Hoops on five piece. No biscuit in the super chat. Hey, it's still up and, and stuck. Are we good now? Because I can keep giving your team the business. Just let me know, bro. We always good. We always good, bro. Roast away. We always good, bro. You another one. You ain't got to worry about that shit. You got my personal phone number, bro. We always good. Let me let me slide on up here. Just do boxing in the building. What's up, homie? Y'all go sub up to Just Do, man. Putting in their work over there, dog. Salute to him and his queen, Miss Just Do, man. And they family, bro. Salute to you, bro. Keep doing your thing, man. Much love and much support and respect to you. Realistic Washington fan, what's happening with you, bro? Salute. Mike Biggs Boxing, what's good? Arena, I see you in the building. Emmanuel Carter, what's up? All things in the building. What's happening with you? SOB TV, what's good, bro? Salute to you. Salute to you. Uh, King in the building, what's happening with you? D Free in the building. Y'all go sub up to my homie D Free, too, over there with the TWT doing his damn thing in the building. Mike Biggs Boxing, Kelvin Davis, Kelvin Davis fighting right now on Pro Box TV. Yeah, y'all put us up at the same time, goddamn. <laughs> Put us up at the same time, bro. Eric B, what's happening with you? Texas 16 South, I see you. LaMarcus Robinson, what's good? Oh, and to all the channel members, I, 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 I did two predictions today. I got four more coming tomorrow. The two that I did today will be dropped tomorrow, and the four that I do tomorrow will be dropped on Friday. Don't worry. I ain't never going to forget about y'all. I got y'all covered. It's hard to do Wednesday night fights and Thursday night fights for me because my schedule is just hectic, bro. Otherwise, I did the Sam Goodman fight. I did the, uh, the fight that's... You know what I'm saying? Going on right now with Kelvin Davis. It's just hard to find time to get predictions out in the middle of the week with my schedule. But if it's happening on a Friday and a Saturday, I got y'all, bro. So y'all be on the lookout for those to all the channel members. I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, we got new groove boy in the building. Be cooking boys on Twitter, man. Salute. Savage Bo, I see you was handing Omega Red in the building. My light-skinned brother from another another day one supporter, man. Salute to your Omega Red Cash Crypto. What's up? Bullet Gibson in the building, bro. Bullet, like I said, bro, this first topic for you. LeRon Jones, what's happening with you? Salute to the homie LeRon in the building. I always keep me. I be seeing everything, but just in case I don't, LeRon sending that shit. LeRon is sending that shit. Big Block, what's up? LeRon is sending that shit to me to make sure I see a D-Town Funk. What's happening with you? Deem in the building. Fire video you did about, uh, what that shit was about you did, bro? I just watched the shit, too. Uh, Hold on, it's gonna come to me. Oh, the whole uh changing uh Devin Haney changing his mind and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. Brother Huey Q, what's happening with you? Y'all go sub up to the homie Dean too, man. Go check out his channel. Doing good work over there. Blunt Sports, what's happening with you? Salute to you. Philly Bull, I see you. Gertz, did I speak to you? If not, what's up, Gertz? My bad if I miss you. Million Films, what's happening with you? Philly Bull, what's good? Andre Noble, what's up, homie? Jay Allen, I see you. What's good with you, bro? Wookie Wook, what's happening? My homie Joseph Jackson, young homie Joseph Jackson. What's good, Joseph? Victor in the building. What's up, Victor? Salute to you. Yeah, LeRon, that's what we on tonight. Yep, for sure. Mr. Boxing Fanatics, what's happening? Big Braille, what's up? Shoo Shoo Bang in the building. What's good? What's good with you? We got Victor coming through. Five piece. No biscuit in the super chat. Love that KO cooking. Get at him. Yeah, we're going to talk tonight. We're going to talk tonight. Andre Noble, what's good with you, man? Salute to you. Cap man, what's happening? Cap man, salute, bro. Salute to you. Hope all is well with you, man. Glad you glad you coming through tonight, man. Oak Cliff Sensei, what's up? Ball out mixtape. Fire. What's good? Kiro Black, what's happening? Danetta 27 in the building. Eyes boxing. I see you, Judah Ben Israel. What's up? Jay in the building. I heard Shakur could be fighting Abdul Levin. If you look at the WBC rankings, it looked like it would be him. Look, I told y'all, bro. Listen. <sighs> yes, I'm braggadocious when I call myself the king. But when I talk, I just did a video. And I said it on the live stream, too. I said, you do not need to know. You don't need to wait for Top Rank or Shakur to tell you whether or not he re-signed. To top rank. All you have to do is wait for them to say who his opponent is. And if his opponent is anybody other than Raymond Muratala, if it's somebody that we all know is going to have to fight the fight of their life to beat him, or it's somebody that don't have no chance to beat him, then you'll know that he re-signed the top rank. Okay? 
So he looked me in my face and he told me I'm a free agent. After this fight, I'm a free agent. Looks like he didn't read up if he's fighting Abdulev. If he's fighting Zaire, Zaire Abdulev, who Devin Haney knocked out, if he's fighting him, Abdulev, who went back to Russia to try to build his career up, got a stoppage against Lenares and beat a couple of other fighters that y'all don't know. If that is who Shakur Stevenson is fighting in July 6th in Newark, New Jersey, then, bro, he re-signed the top rank. Furthermore, furthermore, this shit just skipped my mind, but when I said it, I thought about it. Top rank wouldn't be giving him a hometown fight if he didn't re-sign to them. So, all of you Shakur fans, I know you hate it. I know you ain't, I know you, I know you're not gonna like to hear it, but bro, he done resign. And shout out to my homie Andre Noble with the one piece, no biscuit in the super chat, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just just so y'all know, bro. Hold on, it, it fucked me up, bro. It fucked me up. It took me up somewhere. But yeah, Jay. So you know. He resigned. If that shit true, he resigned. But I think it's true because they wouldn't allow him to be fighting in motherfucking New Jersey if he didn't resign. Night Rider, what's up? Because that's building him. Maybe I, 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 maybe I don't do a good job of explaining why I think that is. Because that's building him. You push your core in New Jersey, you're building his fan base. You're getting his numbers up. He's gonna do a good live gate. If he's on his way out the door, Bob Aram and Top Rank don't want to make him look good. If he's on his way to free agency and you're trying to renegotiate with him, you want to drive his value down so he can ask for, so you can get him to get less, take less money when you try to resign him. So it's not as competitive with PBC or Golden Boy or other suitors that may come along to try to sign him. But by putting him in a place like New Jersey, where he is from, where he has a good fan base, he's going to do a good gate there. He's going to do good attendance there, which is going to drive his value up. But if you're Bob Aram, you don't even give a fuck about that if you already re-signed him. You want him to draw, drive his value up because you already got him inked to a deal. So all signs to me are pointing to Shakur Stevenson signed the top rank. I could be wrong, but I see Abdulev, an opponent he should be. That if he loses to, Bob Abram doesn't get control of his belt. And I see them putting him in Newark, New Jersey, where he can continue to build his name and build his brand. Brand. Why would Bob Abram do him that favor if he's on his way out the door? Make it make sense. Savage Killer Queen in the building. What's up? Brandon Brown, I see you. What's happening? Always, Dean. I don't just tell you shit on the phone, bro, and not. You know what I mean? I don't just be talking. Crown Jewel Boxing, that's another one, bro. Y'all go sub up to the homie Crown Jewel Boxing, man. Doing good work over there, bro. Only the only, only fucked up thing about him is he's an Eagles fan. That shit came across my timeline. I ain't gonna lie. I, I start to hit the thumb down button on your shit. When that Eagle video, you when that Philadelphia Eagle video you did came across my timeline and shit. I started to hit the thumbs down on your shit, but I like, nah, I fuck with Crown Jewel. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the like button. I'm going to go ahead and hit the like button on this shit because it's, you know what I'm saying? That's my boxing content creating brother and shit. And I'm, I'm going to hit the like button on this shit, but bro, but bro, <laughs> you an Eagles fan, bro? Yeah, that hurt my feelings, bro. I, I, I thought, I thought you was rocking. You know what I mean? I thought you was rocking, bro. Brandon House, what's happening, homie? Sunny Day, what's up? My homie A1 who's on back in that super chat. Five piece, no biscuit. Omega Red is Colin Powell Sen Colin Powell Sr. Omega Red is Condoleezza Rice twin. A hey, just do boxing is brother Malcolm Z. Malcolm Z? Malcolm Z? Unc, what's up? Andre Finders in a building. Salute, Unc. Glad to see you catching the lie. He be in them videos with that motivation, boy. Keep it going, nephew. Nephew, keep telling the truth, nephew. Keep talking your shit. Like, yeah, huh? <laughs> Give me that motivation. You just made me go. You just made me go. You made me go make another video, bro. Now, nah, all good, Cap, man. All good, bro. I'm glad you're healthy, man. I'm glad everything is going well for you, bro. Glad you could pull up on me, man. No evidence. What's happening? Meaty Riley in the building. What's up, Meaty Riley? Salute. We got Devin Sonye in the, in the, in the, in the building. What's up? I missed two of them. No, I read them hoes, bro. I read the one. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. My bad. My bad. My bad. Shout out to homie A1 who was on back in the super chat. Five piece. No biscuit out there, bitch. He say, man, hold up. I always no biscuit out there, bitch. What a motherfucker got to do to get a biscuit? Add it, damn it. 
I mean, it's just my thing, you know. Okay, you can see me singing his shit, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I think uh 78, 78 Sports TV be like he hit him with the McNugget or some shit he say. You know what I'm saying? With the two-piece McNugget or the five-piece McNugget or some shit. 78 say, you know what I'm talking about? And, you know, no biscuit out of it, you know. uh, What Blue Blood say, bro? Blue Blood say some shit, too. Uh, Damn. Damn, what Blue Blood say? What Blue Blood say? Everybody got let me Let me do me, bro. Damn. That's my shit, bro. Why you no biscuit out there, bitch? Damn, bro, let me, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying, you know, I might, you, I might want a shirt. I might get a shirt, no biscuit out there, bitch. You, know, you never know. You never know. Merch coming soon, goddamn. <laughs> Shit, man. Shout out to homie Zach B, man. Five piece. No biscuit out there, bitch. He say, cook. We gonna cook. We most definitely. Uh, who else we got in the building? Uh, spoke to them. Spoke to them. See Easy's in the building. What's up, See Easy? They saying they saying it's uh, it's Zaire Abdelil, bro. They saying it's Zaire Abdelil, bro. That would that would that's what that's what they came in here saying. So I gotta look it up. To be honest, I ain't seen no reports. I ain't looked on none of the sites myself. But my chat is one of the realest, most knowledgeable chats in the building. So in, in boxing talk on YouTube. So if they say that. That's what they talking about. I'm pretty sure that shit is accurate. And if it is accurate, it just means to me that guys like him, guys like Christian and Billy, like, bro, don't 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 come to me about how bad you want to fight Tank Davis. Don't talk to me about how you want to fight Devin Haney, how you move up to 140 to fight Subrail Matias, bro. Don't talk to me about none of that shit, bro. You need to be over there talking about, man, I want motherfucking Lomachenko. I want Emmanuel Navarrete. I want Tiafimo Lopez. Them the names you need to be talking about, bro. Cause you 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 didn't even you you ain't even wait to see what was up. That's on you. We got dragons assassins straight up from across the pond. The building. My homie J A Dixon is in the building. We got V Rock. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Yeah, you know I got you crowned, Jewel. Come on, man. Come on, man. This shit hurt my heart though. I thought you was. You know what I'm saying? You still one of them one, but I thought you was really really one of them one of them one of them ones, and then you was an Eagles fan. And you know everybody can't be perfect. You know what I mean? Like, Everybody got a flaw. Your flaw is you root for the Eagles, man. Cassandra, what's up? Salute. Quick question everything TV in the building. Pat Greedy, I see you. What's happening with you? Who else we got, bro? Did I speak to you, Marquis? Marquis, what's up, bro? I think I did, but maybe I didn't, bro. Maybe I didn't. Big Dog Willie in the super chat with the five piece. No biscuit out there. He say, KO, has Bill Haney already clinched Cap Master of the Year like Canelo clinched Duck of the Year? KO, I want to hear your opinion. Salute to the Haney Cup. Um, Bill Haney is a shoe in for Cap Master of the Year every year since I've had a channel, bro. And that ain't no hate. That's just, you know, he be capping for his son, but he is definitely the capper of the year in 2024. No matter what else happens in 2024, he's capper of the year, bro. Canelo is the duck of the year in 2024. Canelo can climb out of it, though. If Canelo signs to fight David Benavidez for his second fight of the year, if he gets guilted into fighting David Benavidez, if the pressure comes, if the money is too great for him to pass up, and he does end up fighting David Benavidez, Canelo can turn around, someone else can sneak in and take the award. But it's Canelo's award to lose. I can't believe we're talking about awards that nobody should want, but whatever, bro. You ask the question, I'm going to give you the goddamn answer. That's how I'm feeling tonight. So Canelo Alvarez is definitely in the lead, in the pole position for Duck of the Year. But he can he can he can come off of that lead. All he gotta do is fight David Benavidez, and then all will be forgiven. Bro. For Bill Haney, though, him with the like him with the duck with the cap of the year is kind of like hmm, I'm trying to think of something. It's kind of like the SEC and the Big Ten, bro. You know, you know at least every year until they they went to the new college football format. But yeah, yo, you'll understand what the analogy I'm making. You know, every year you're gonna get at least one SEC team and one Big Ten team that's gonna be in the college football playoffs, bro. You can you can lock that shit. You can clinch that shit. 
You can lock that shit. You can clinch that shit. You can even go a step further and you can know during Nick Saban's era that it's either in doing Kirby Smart era for the last four or five years, one of them four teams in the college football playoffs, one of them going to either be Alabama or Georgia, bro. That's how Bill Haney is with the cap shit, bro. You know for a fact every year he the front runner, bro. Definitely the front runner, bro. DC Drake, what's up? Running Bravo, what's up? Planet 619, he close. I may not name the award after him, but he going to be the logo. <laughs> you know how they got the NBA logo and shit? He going to be the logo of the award and shit. Logo of the Duck Award going to be Bill Hank. Yeah, I mean, Cap of the Year Award, he going to be the logo of that motherfucker, man. Blackberry Crown. Oh, no. I want to now. I want to now. Yeah, I want to now. Yeah, we're going to try that this weekend. He say, Shakur fighting Devin Leftovers. Bad look. Facts. Uh, pugilistic shit's Nick in the building. What's up? Yeah, bad look. Facts, bro. All facts, Jonathan. Who else we got? Queen Queen in the building. What's up, Queen Queen? Salute to the queen of the TWT and to my homie G5 Gay. I'm sure he's busy, but salute to my homie, man. All right, bro. Let's get to this. Let's get to this cooking. So I told y'all the first topic got to be for the homie um, Bullet, bro. I got to do it. Um, can we get a like check? I need a like check, bro, before I go any further. Let me, let me, let me see. I know. I hope y'all ain't doing me dirty, man. Let's take a look. Let's, ah, nah, we got, hey, we got to get likes over, honey. I want to get to the first topic. I want to talk boxing. Young world, what up, homie? I want to get, I want to get to the, I want to get to the topic. I want to talk boxing. I really do. I got so many things to talk about, but I got to get 22 more likes. Mods, let's get the likes up, mods. Let's encourage the people to get the likes up. We got 145 people in here early. I need y'all to get the likes So We about to get to this cook. Hopefully we'll get some smoke today. I'm ready for it. You know what I mean? Hopefully somebody hit the link. If not, we just going to cook. We just going to cook. We got to get them likes up, though. I understand everybody can't get like A1. Everybody can't get like Big Dog Willie, Zach, Andre, Victor, Maddie, Emmanuel. I understand, bro, but I, I, I do appreciate the support. Let's separate the people who are here for boxing talk versus the shadow watching ass mofos. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's let, let's let's get these likes up, bro. We up to ninety two. We just need we just need eight more. We just need eight more real quick. Look at the haters. They left. They said we well, hit the like button. You can't make me hit the like button. And they left. Good. Yeah. You gonna watch my shit? We gonna get these likes up? You gonna watch us run these numbers up over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We up to 95. We just need five more. Look like we're at 97. Three more. Three more. Can I get three more? Y'all ever been to them churches where the pastor got a certain number in his head that he want to get for the collection plate? Who got a $5 donation? $5 donation? Who get a $5 donation? The spirit is speaking to me. Somebody, somebody up here, somebody up here got a $20. We got a $20. Got a $20 donation. Who's gonna give 20? Who's gonna give 20? I feel it. I feel it in my spirit. We up to 98. I need two more. Cassandra becoming a member again. I smell smoke. Hit the like button. Yep, facts. <laughs> Come on, y'all causing traffic facts. All right, we up over 100. Let's get to it. All right, bullet. This one for you, bro. The Lil, what's up? Listen. Listen, you know, other people don't talk about all the boxing, bro. <laughs> but we be watching everything. And Eric Lubin, under the radar, under the radar, he said, y'all got me messed all the way up. Because, see, he was accused of ducking Tim Zoo. Tim Zoo said they tried to get the Eric Lubin fight. Eric Lubin, they want to fight. They made the offer. Eric Lubin pushed shit back. They want to fight and shit. Right, Erickson Lubin tired of this bullshit. This is what Erickson Lubin said. I'm gonna read it to you. So, fight her about the interview, Tim Zoo. They said, Any question for Tim Zoo? We'll be speaking to him today. Let me know and I will shout you out. 
Erickson Lubin raised his hand. He quoted that shit. He said, I got a question. Why you lied to the media saying I turned down the fight or got cold feet when my team was never offered anything? Just say Keith Thurman was always the plan for you, bozo motherfucker. I say, damn, Lubin, tell us how you really feel. Tell us how you really feel. And I got to say, bro, Tim Zoo, you got to respond to this shit. You got to respond to this shit. Ain't nothing wrong with fighting Keith Thurman, but you you accuse this man of ducking. He said y'all ain't offered shit. And I hope Fight Hub do their job, Marcos Villegas, and he asked Tim Zoo about that shit because I fuck with Tim Zoo. And I fuck with Erickson Lubin because Lubin ain't turned down. No fans. Go look at go look at who Lubin done fought, bro. Go look at the people that he done fought. Bro, he done fought Jamel Charlo. Worked his way back up, got in there with Sebastian Fundora after after what Sebastian Fundora did to his ass. He got in that bitch with Jesus Ramos, bro. I got I I, I can't say that, that Lou been lying to me, bro. So Tim Zoo, you gotta respond to this shit. And Tim Zoo, same thing. Tim Zoo could have signed anywhere off the cloud of his daddy, bro. Off the cloud of his daddy, he could have went to the zone. He could have went to top rank, but he said, "Now nah, all the smoke at 154 is over here on Premier Boxing Champions." Man, I'm going over there because I want I want all the smoke. And he himself, Brian Mendoza, Keith Thurman, Tony Harrison, he been stepping on shit. Can't first fight in America? Give me Gouche. He been stepping on shit, bro. So it like, damn, what you saying? Did the suits lie to Tim Zoo and say Lubin didn't get back because they always want to keep Thurman for him? That's a possibility. Maybe Tim Zoo didn't know. Maybe they, they lied to Tim Zoo because you know these promoters, Al Heyman is not exempt. He trying to get to the bag. And God damn it, I'm going to tell you this one thing right here. Al Heyman believes in his heart, and I believe this shit to be true too. Tim Zoo, Keith Thurman is a bigger fight than Tim Zoo, Erickson Lubin. We getting to that, Blunt Sports. I, I'm on it all. We got DeMonte in the building. What's up? I'm on it all, but I had to do this for, for my homie Bullet. I had to clear Lubin's name a little bit because I just want people to know Lubin ain't let that shit die. He ain't let that shit slide. He heard what Tim Zoo said, and he responded to it. Now, Tim Zoo came out. Ash and Lubin responded. Balls in your court, Tim Zoo. Whoever stopped responding first, I'm believing the other person. So right now, I'm on Lubin's side, damn it. <laughs> shit right now i'm on lubin's side until you oh shit i'm bl hey he go hard silent tears bro so and i'm gonna get back to them super chats silent tears in that one that he dropped that's going viral right now to uh t t that boy that boy that boy that boy rapping boy that boy rapping boy poke out my chest and lift my chin and nigga catch me first yeah yeah, bully. He, hey, he stay. He, hey, he sliding on them beats, boy. He sliding on them beats. Y'all got y'all one with him. Y'all got y'all one with him. I like. I like. You can tell he mean everything he rapping, bro. You can tell he really. You know what I'm saying? You can tell that he really mean that shit. I fucks with it. Shout out to Barney Mori Riri. Five piece. No biscuit in the super chat. He says Ko eighty six TV grind. Grind. Shout out to. My homie D Free being a member again. Don't be scared. Get that smoke. Facts, bro. Facts. But yeah, bro. Lubin responded, y'all. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta get, we gotta see what Tim Zoo got to say. I'm gonna go check out that interview. First of all, Fight Hub, if you ain't asked that question, you ain't do your goddamn job. You got a fighter that directly told you what to ask because he won't smoke. And if 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 Tim Zoo Beats Keith Thurman in this non-title fight that they have, and even though it's stupid as fuck, it's a non-title fight. It's a non-title fight that if Tim Zhu lose, then he gets stripped of his belt. But if Keith Thurman win, he don't get the belt. She just got done eating, Ronnie. The wife is back there about to get her out right now. She just let her out right now. Ronnie a me Ronnie a member of Peter on the low. <laughs> Ronnie a member of Peter on the low. But if Tim Zoo beat Keith Thurman 
And he ain't fighting Terrence Crawford. I love that Erickson Lubin fight. I think Lubin done, done earned his shot. He done earned his shot. You know what I mean? But yeah, but y'all let me know if I'm tripping. So they're fighting at a catchweight because the WBO said we ain't letting you put your belt on the line against Keith Thurman because he's not ranked. So they decide to fight at a catchweight of 155. But if you lose to him, then we taking your belt. But Keith Thurman, if you beat him, we not giving you the belt. Am I tripping? Am I tripping? But anyway, I'm off for that, bro. Lubin, talk your shit, bro. Don't let nobody throw salt on your name, dog. I understand that people don't want to respond to shit, and sometimes shit may be beneath them and whatever, but when people throwing dirt on your name, you got to respond like that. And I love his response. He basically said, you lying, bro. You lying, bro. Your ass is lying. This is what really happened. I never got no offer. What's happening? Basically, send me an offer. I'll fight your ass. Send me, hey, you know, Cassandra, Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman, fucking fanatic. That's some bullshit, KO. Why you ain't going hard for Keith like that, KO? Tell him to put the belt on the line, KO. They scared one time, gonna smoke his ass. I've never had a conversation with her, and I, I don't know if she really talked like that. That's just what I hear in that comment. Just she on that Blackberry Crown. She asked me about Blackberry Crowns. You, you know, Blackberry Crowns. That's some bullshit, KO. <laughs> KO, that's some bullshit. Look, man. <laughs> Look, man. Keep Thurman need a shot at them belts. That one time he deserved it. <laughs> he deserved that shit, KO. <laughs> Low him down. What's up? <laughs> He deserved that shit. How? So, so Keith Thurman win, and they gonna take the motherfucker belt, but they ain't gonna give it to Keith. They hating on Keith. <laughs> they hating on Keith. Ko, what the fuck is this shit? Keith Thurman gotta win two fights to get one belt around this bitch, man. Boxing, boxing on his ass to go away. Goddamn. DP, are you with me? What's up, homie? Yeah, especially for me, V Rock. I like to drink this shit straight. I love the salt, the caramel. I love the peach crown. Um, I'm gonna try that blackberry crown straight on the rocks and shit. I'm an old fashioned drinker. You got an old fashioned on your menu. I'm trying that shit. Some of them hoes be trash though. I had a motherfucker make me an old fashioned and made that shit with a bunch of ice, bro. I damn near just sent that shit back, bro. Matter of fact, it was at the goddamn Michael Blackson shit we went to. I asked for the old fashioned. They put their name on it. It's called the Improv Old Fashioned. They gave me a thing full of ice. You supposed to have one big ice cube with that bitch, bro. With your liquor, your bitters, and your motherfucking uh orange peel in that bitch good than the motherfucker and that motherfucker put a cup full of ice on my shit i said bro who's your bartender they need to be fired bro they need to be fucking fired bro anyway anyway moving off of this looming shit yeah yeah i need y'all to just come out and tell me that you like terrence bud crawford more than you like boxing bro that's what I need y'all to do, bro. I need you to just come out, okay? Facts, B-Rock. Because I don't really like a lot of mixed shit when I'm drinking. So, that's the closest to like a non mix I guess you can call it a cocktail that I fucks with. You know what I mean? Just tell me, bro. All right? Slogan one, what up? Just tell me, Jay Horseman, what up? Key Alexandra, I see you in the building. Just tell me. That you like Terrence Bud Crawford more than you like boxing. Miss Joe is in the building. KO, sorry to change the subject, but I was wondering if you saw, I, I think you mean if you saw, if you say, saw Bill's last tweet. No, I didn't listen. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Ryan is not crazy. He's just an ungrateful piece of shit that Henry should have made her. Damn. Is that the one you're talking about? Is that the one you're talking about? Vincent Williams, what's up? 
Is that the one you're talking about, Miss Joette, or is there another one? What's up, TD? Thomas in the building. What's up? Is that the one I wanted? I need to know before I cook on it. She said yes. All right, I'll cook on it real quick. Give me a second. Let me take this off. We'll create a banner. Bill Haney, fire shot at Ryan Garcia. Boom. There we go. I'll cook on it. So, I didn't see it, but I just read it. And it's getting real personal. He wished Ryan would have never been born. <laughs> if Ryan would have never been born, your son wouldn't have his biggest fight. Okay. He wouldn't have his biggest fight of his career. But I understand his frustration. Now, I don't agree with that shit. That shit was, you know, deplorable. And you're bringing the parents into it, bringing the mom into it. You know. I, I, I think that's tasteless. I think that's classless. Um, because... At the end of the day, you know, you, you got to handle women a certain way. Um, and saying that shit is just, you know, that's 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 deplorable and shit. That's some shit you, you know, and you can't really stand on nothing. Like, you ain't going to fight Ryan. You know what I mean? You ain't going to fight Ryan. And at the end of the day, that is that man's wife. So, yeah, I ain't, I ain't fucking with that. But I understand the frustration because Ryan is fucking up their fight. He's fucking up their fight. He's fucking up the sales of their fight. My beautiful wife is in the building. What's up, baby? Salute. He fucking up their fight, y'all. So, Bill Haney is mad because y'all got to understand to Devin Haney and Bill Haney, this is supposed to be their ticket. This is supposed to be their ticket to Superstar, right? This is supposed to be their ticket to Superstar, but when you go to websites and you got this shit available, all them goddamn tickets available. That's vivid seats. Then you take your ass to StubHub and you click in there, motherfucker. And you see this shit. On StubHub, right? All the motherfucking tickets available. All right? Then you leave StubHub and you take your ass to SeatGeek, right? And you see on SeatGeek all the motherfucking tickets available. Then you leave SeatGeek, right? You leave SeatGeek and you go to Ticketmaster because Ticketmaster is the main site. It's the site that the Barclays use. You know what I mean? If you go to Barclays and shit, this is the main site. You go to SeatGeek, right? You go to SeatGeek and you got all them goddamn tickets available, right? You can understand why Bill and Devin are so fucking upset because Golden Boy and Ryan Garcia are taking a fight that's supposed to be a big fight and turn that shit into a circus. Now, when I told y'all yesterday, hey, man, all this traction y'all say Ryan is getting, that ain't really good traction. That's not something that is going to equal people wanting to go to the fight because here in the real world, for those of us that actually spend our money, right? It's too much uncertainty surrounding the fight. We don't know if Ryan's going to show up. You're disrespecting fans in America where you're holding the fight because you're charging Americans and you're putting the fight on in America, but you're making it free across the world, right? One of your fighters openly said that he tried to pull out the fight and push the fight back two weeks to fight in Vegas on May 4th, when everyone knows that Canelo fights in Vegas on May 4th. So, in the real world, people are like, these tickets is high as fuck. We don't know if the main event fighter is going to show up. And they don't have an undercard yet. But when I when I tell you these things, guys like to call me a hater and shit. But I just showed you, bro. And again, 
I'm not one of these content creators that's going to lie to you. I'm not one of these content creators that's going to make anything up. I encourage you all, if you are hesitant to believe what I'm saying, if you are um, pessimistic about me because you think I'm a Tank fanboy, bro, you can go to VividSeats.com. You can go to Ticketmaster.com. You can go to StubHub. And you can go to SeatGeeks. And you can go look at it for yourself. You can go look at it for yourself. Today, they added another 303 tickets on Seat Geeks and sold 10. So Bill and Devin are fucking upset. And they're being petty with Ryan. And they're talking that shit. That was an angry man speaking. Because I guarantee you, if someone speaks on Bill Haney's mother that way, or speak on, I believe he has a daughter, speak on his daughter that way, or speak on his wife that way, bro, he'd have a problem. He'd have a problem. I don't care how cool anybody in this chat thinks that we are. If you spoke on my wife like that, you never see the light of day on this channel again, bro. The shit was is reprehensible. And he should have better self-control than that. Specifically, you know, in Salah, Allah, all that Muslim stuff he be talking, right? So I ain't fucking with it. But I I'm giving you the reason why it's happening. I'm giving you the reason why they're so upset. I'm giving you the reason why they're so tight. I'm giving you the reasons why Bill Haney is going from YouTube channel to YouTube channel. Pulling up on people, trying to to keep his his name out there, keeping his keeping his um keeping his son's name out there because the tickets are not selling. So he's fucking pissed off because he knows it's going to make him and his son look bad, bro. Whether it's fair or not, if you win the fight, you no one no one's gonna get to the table and feel sorry for you. Cause remember, Devin's a free agent after this, so this ain't even a tank thing, bro. This ain't even a Tank Davis situation. This ain't even a Tank and Devin thing. This is about okay. What if he wants to re-up to the zone? What if he wants to go back to top rank? What if he wants to go to Premier Boxing Champions? They gonna be looking at his numbers like, bro, the zone just, the zone just told Canelo, nah, bro, we ain't paying for Berlanga. And they just told Canelo, yeah, if you fight Hame Mungi on May 4th, you're going to have to get PBC back in Volca. We can't pay what they can pay for him. So they ain't finna break the bank for Devin coming off of a bad live gate or a bad motherfucking ticket, bad motherfucking pay-per-view. This ain't even about Tank Davis. This is about the next deal, bro. Whether it's a two-fight deal, a one-fight deal, a three-fight deal, they ain't trying to take a pay cut, and Ryan is probably putting him in a position to where motherfuckers going to be like, now, wait a minute, you made this much. He made this much. This is how much I spent in marketing. This is how much I spent in advertising. This is how much revenue y'all made, though. This shit ain't adding up. So, yeah, we can sign you to a two-fight, three-fight deal, but we need you to take $2 million a fight, though. Oh, and, and you got to give us, like, a fight that we feel like we can make money off of. That's why they mad, bro. That's, that's why they're upset. Ryan is fucking up not only this bag, probably, but he's fucking up the next bag, too. Not just for him. Y'all always, you know, you know when, you, when you talk to some boxing fans, they say it take two to tango, but people really don't know what that means. Well, it take two to tango, yeah. But if you get the wrong motherfucker to tango with, your ass get knocked out of the goddamn competition, right? If you pick the wrong motherfucker to tango with or the wrong person to dance with, it could fuck up your, your bag in the future. It could fuck up your numbers if you hit yourself to the wrong horse. And to add insult to the injury, Ryan is doing this shit to their promotion but promoted the shit out of a fight with their biggest fucking rival. Bring that back. Ryan is single-handedly, and Golden Boy are single-handedly killing the promotion of Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, while Ryan Garcia 
built up his fight with Tank Davis like no other, which is Devin's biggest rival right now. Bro, it's just not only is it injury, it's insult on top of insult on top of insult on top of insult to injury, bro. So it's deplorable what Bill Haney did. And it's not coming from a, a I want y'all to know this. It's not coming from a place of showing Ryan who the man is or talking tough to Ryan or or um talking talking big to Ryan is coming from a place of frustration. It's coming from a place of of being very, very disappointed with how things is going, bro. With the promotion and the sales of this fight so far. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes from, bro. But yeah, I think that shit was reprehensible. Moving on, though. Back to this. Just tell me that you like Terrence Crawford more than you like boxing, bro. Just tell me that shit and we can all get along. Just tell me that shit and we'll be good, bro. And this ain't for running because he the only one that I heard kept it real, bro. Terrence Bud Crawford can do no wrong in some of your eyes. Terrence Bud Crawford can fight whoever he wants. You want him to get the most amount of money possible. And you feel like he has done enough in his career, some of you. I don't feel as though you guys are doing the sport of boxing justice, bro. I think I think that that is the worst stance to take that I've heard of. Is that a fighter can do whatever they want to do once they get to a certain point. And at the end of the day, someone of the skill level of Bud Crawford the pound for pound number one fighter in the world needs to be held to a higher standard. And this tune up shit that you're, some of y'all are talking about, I'm not trying to hear none of that shit. You can't tell me in one breath the motherfucker should go up and fight Canelo Alvarez directly at 168, but then in the next breath say that you cool with him moving up to 160 and taking the tune up to get himself acclimated against Chris Eubanks Jr., bro. With Jamel Charlo on the table. And I thought about this too. And if the homie Jay Norrie is watching, this is for you, bro. The PBC couldn't offer up Jerron Boots in this because Jerron Boots in this ain't a motherfucking PBC fighter. That one's for you. And who is Bud Crawford to say, I don't want to fight this guy. I ain't fighting that guy. You know what I'm saying? I You look like a hoe against Canelo, so I don't got to fight you. Bro, you can't take credit for another man work, bro. Y'all, a motherfucker can debate Money Brown TV, could debate everything boxing, could go debate BFTB, could go over there to 78 Sports TV, get cooked, can go to King G, the boxologist, get cooked. I'm still going to be like, well, shit, you can still get this smoke with me, though, because I got to cook you myself. I ain't taking credit for their work. Crawford and, 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 and the fans of his, bro, y'all can't take credit for Canelo's work. Make Bud do that to him. Same with Erickson Lubin. You can't take credit for Jamel Charlo's work. You can't take credit for Sebastian Fundora's work. You do it to him. What's up, Poncho? You do it to him, bro. And if you're going to be moving up to 160, man, you got Carlos Adamas right there. Come on, bro. If you're going to move up to, to, to 154, you got Jamel right there. Lubin right there was already on the table. You can invoke your super status and fight the, the, the Tims who keep Thurman winner. No, nah, bro, we're not putting him over the sport of boxing, bro. And y'all need to just, if you like him more than you like the sport, just say that shit so we can all move on. We can all move on. Erickson Lubin and Jamel J are better than motherfucking Chris Eubanks Jr. They're better than Chris Eubanks Jr. And Terrence Bud Crawford 
is supposed to carry the mantle for the sport, and the sport should be. And what I try to push, bro, fight who we want to see you fight. Fight who we want to see you fight, bro. Stop with this bullshit. Fight a good fight. And it's so much more realistic smoke, and it's so much better smoke for him at 154, even 160, even at 168. That's it. That's all, bro. Boots still say Bud ducking, KO. Bud ain't ducking Jerome Boots in this if he go up to 154 and pursue titles there, bro. If he stays at 147. If he stays at 147 and he's not rematching Earl Smith Jr. and he fights some trash-ass title defense at 147, then yes, we can have that conversation. But he's not ducking, he's not ducking Boots by going up to 154 and trying to fight a champion, bro. Straight up. That's it. That's all. Terrence, what's up? Terrence. Yeah, what's Terrence. up, knockout? You, you, you know I was coming up here to knock out. No, I didn't. Was gonna just, he wasn't going to get that off without me saying something. Let me just say this: you you mentioned you mentioned Charlo. I, I think me and Nora, Nora, Nori, both of us agree. Then we don't want to see that. For you keep saying people want to see that. Who wants to see that knockout? No one. You you everyone, say everyone, you can, that you, you, everyone that isn't above you, man, bro. You said you said you're in the minority, dog. You you said no. You're you in said the minority, dog. You said Buzz not taking credit for anybody's work. The question is, with his last performance with C Carnello, that does affect Bud because he didn't fight, and nobody wants to see it anymore. And there's no legacy for the fight anymore. You got to understand, Crawford is fighting for two things: legacy and money. It, He's the fuck, how, you can oh, get wait, wait. Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo how? is the how? Fight that legacy fight that Chris Eubanks Jr. That, no, you say that, Knockout, but Chris most Chris people, do for I don't legacy, agree with bro. you. I don't agree with you, Knockout. What, is, what does Chris Eubanks Jr. do for Bud Money. Legacy, bro. Money. Bread. What does he do for his legacy? Bread. And nothing. Nothing. And neither does Charlo. That's to my point. Neither mind. one of them. Neither one of them. Neither one of them. Chris no, Banks I, I'm not out my mind. Champion, let alone undisputed number one. Chris Eubanks Jr. has never has never done half of the things. That he don't Jamel have the three belts right now. He can't do nothing Jamal, for his Jamel legacy. Carlo is a much bigger and better name than Chris Eubanks Jr. I'm not, and I'm not arguing that point. I'm saying it does no, nothing it for his legacy for, 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 in terms for of his belt. legacy, bro. You out your mind, dog? If you if go he had Terrence those Crawford, three belts, I would agree. If Terrence Crawford's resume. It's complete, and he only has one fight left, and that shit say Earl Spence and then Chris Eubanks Jr., or that shit say Earl Spence and Jamel Charlo. His resume is going to be viewed in a much better light if that shit I, says I Earl disagree Spence with you. and Jamel I, Charlo. I vehemently disagree with that statement. You can disagree all day, but you're wrong. I vehemently disagree with that. See, because Charlo at this point is nothing. He, he, he didn't fight against Canelo. He just took the money. And now it's just a bad fight for Bud. The only reason Bud wanted to fight him is because he had those belts. Had he had he kept those belts, Bud would fight him. It's no problem because that's a legacy fight. But now it's not a legacy fight. So why take the fight it's when he can make money more fight. money? He can make more money with this other guy. He's going to take fight. the more money. That's more what, money big money. what makes you How? think this big fight, bro? I guarantee he make more. How? I guarantee they got more it's money in the UK. In the UK, make you just make more. They Ooh. make more money, and he's going to make Ooh, no more problem. money in the UK. How many, how many pay-per-views has Chris Eubanks Jr. sold? I'm just saying in the UK. How many, how many more money. in the UK? I don't know. I don't know how many he's from. None, bro. He ain't never been on pay-per-view. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Never been on but how much did Charlo do on pay-per-view? And what did Charlo do on pay-per-view? 50 grand? 50,000? He did 50? He did 50,000? I'm saying when he 
He did fifty when when he when him and his brother did the pay per view. They did fifty. So that was Canelo that did the, whatever yeah, numbers. That was because of Canelo. Canelo Alvarez. It had nothing to do with Charlo. Yeah, it was Canelo. Canelo Alvarez fight. Yeah, it was Canelo that did the numbers. Nothing from Charlo. So, so it was all Canelo. Charlo, Charlo, Charlo didn't sell that fight. No, no. Charlo, nothing. Nothing. I give so him Charlo, nothing. Charlo's just some peon. Pretty much, especially if he, now. If, he, if he's a peon and he's especially an undefeated now. champion at 154 he's pounds. Not, that never lost his belt in the ring. Then he did. Frank oh. Jr. has never been a champion. He's nothing but money. That's a dollar sign. That's all and he Charlo is. Charlo is money too. No, he not. How much they gonna pay him to fight Charlo? Give me a number. What do you think no, they're gonna pay him I to fight Charlo? I don't make shit up like you. I'm asking you. Well, what do you think they're I gonna pay know. him? I don't make shit up like you. All right. Well, then that's you what I'm on, saying. You on this whole tirade. You hit my link to 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 swing off Bud Johnson. You're going on this whole tirade about how Chris Eubanks Jr. is a bigger fight. Chris Eubanks Jr. ain't never fought. I'm swinging off his Johnson going, because I'm talking fat. By talking about how Chris Eubanks Jr. is going to offer. The people that lose a debate, they start know, talking you about things. Know what Chris Jr. They start in, making insults. I'm not insulting. I don't need to insult you. Why you need to no insult me? Because you're upset. Fight Chris Eubanks Jr. You're upset because I'm telling the truth. And you got to insult me. Huh? Say that again? That that fight is not going to do nothing. A lot of people nothing. have asked for him to fight. Nobody. Who since uh, since he lost Every his belt or before? Fight fan, bro. Since since he lost his belt or before? Before he lost his belts, yes. Still but then he ain't want to fight him. When when he had the belts, here's oh I don't even know this guy. Who is this guy? Oh what? A, be quiet. Be, be quiet. Keep your mouth shut. Take whatever he gets. That's what he was talking Who about before. But now, but now, said, but now he's a nothing. He's a nobody. And now y'all want him to fight. Come on, bro. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop with that man. It, it's the Bud rules. It's the Bud rules. When it comes to when it comes to Bud, it's different rules. This is rules for Bud. Nobody else has those. Yeah. 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 We're not going to do this. You are not going to say that Jamel Charlo is nothing because he lost to Canelo when Chris Eubanks Jr. got knocked out by Liam, Liam, Liam. You're not going to I'm say not, that Chris Eubanks, I'm not man, saying. I'm talking about my own shit, bro. All this back and forth shit, stop. You're not going to tell me that Jamel Charlo is nothing because he lost to Canelo Alvarez by decision when Chris Eubanks Jr. got knocked out by Liam, 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 Liam. OK, you're not going to tell me that Chris Eubanks Jr. brings all this money to the table when he can't even sell in his own fucking country. So how is he getting all this money behind him? How is he getting this big bag fighting Chris Eubanks Jr. when Jamel Charlo has been the biggest, bigger name than Chris Eubanks Jr. this entire time? Jamel Charlo has been on the pound for pound list, which you love so much. Terrence Crawford has never been on that bitch. Jamel Charlo is a former undisputed champion. Who unified getting belt after belt after belt after belt. Chris Eubanks Jr., I don't even know if he ever even fought for a title. I think he might have fought for one. Maybe that Billy Joe fight was a title fight. But he's never even won a world title, let alone been undisputed, bro. You're talking about Terrence Crawford fighting a 154-pound fighter in Jamel Charlo who never lost his belt at 154 pounds. You're not going to act like moving up two weight classes didn't matter. He's back in his weight class where he would be king, where he reigned supreme at, where the only way he lost his belts is because motherfuckers had to strip him. The same shit that you complain about, bud, losing his undisputed shit because a motherfucker stripped him is the same is the same goddamn thing. And at the end of the day, bro, if you're going to give a true fight fan, Terrence Crawford versus Jamel Charlo or Terrence Crawford versus motherfucking Chris Eubanks Jr., bro. Who who Terrence Crawford already know. If you really want to dive into the shit, Terrence Crawford already know this motherfucker can't fuck with him because he over there training with Bo Mac. So Terrence Crawford see this motherfucker all the time. And you put a motherfucker like Terrence Crawford in the ring with his IQ with somebody that he get to see in the gym every fucking day. And you know who Bo Mac going to choose. He been with Terrence Crawford since Terrence Crawford was a little boy. So Bo Mac know all of Chris Eubanks Jr. flaws. So you're going to put Bo Mack and Terrence Crawford in the ring with a motherfucker that they got to see in person time and time again and train them up and shit? Boy, that's food. 
There's no intrigue in that fight. There's no nothing in that fight. That's just a paycheck, bro. The fuck are you talking about now? Before, don't go on no tirade, bro. Don't don't try to go off and change the subject and all that shit. Address something that I said, bro. Address my points. Okay. Uh, first of all, I agree that the fight is just a money fight. I, I've, I've said that over and over. That That's a money fight for but He's just fighting for money. And no matter what you say, you're not going to change my opinion that the Charlo fight means nothing to Bud. What the Bud say after he lost the fight? He said he lost interest in the fight. I lost interest in the fight. A lot of people lost interest in the fight. Whether you want to see it or not is irrelevant. Most people, you say most people want to see it. I disagree. You have to take a poll to see who's right and who's wrong. When he, the way he, it wasn't that he lost to Canelo. It was the fact that he showed no heart. He showed no heart, no determination to fight. So that's why people don't want to see it anymore. It's done. Nobody cares about Charlo. I don't know why y'all keep bringing him up. Nobody cares about That's my main point. That's going to be my main point is that he'd rather take, a yes, an easier fight with you, with you banks, easy money, and then try to get Zoom next. Why is this? Why is this complaint? What is this? It's unbelievable. This is why I say it's butt rules because nobody else has to go through that. If they just fought the biggest fight of their career and then they took a, a lesser fight and then jumped right back into it, I've never heard a complaint. Sugar Ray, um, Leonard did it. They didn't always fight the biggest and baddest fight every time. They had um, um, in fights in between where it wasn't a big opponent. Why is this all, all of a sudden his buddy got to fight every Goliath in every division? He got to fight Benavides. This is just absolutely bizarre. People want Bud to lose so bad that they want him to, out of three guys that he can choose, they want him to always take the toughest challenge. Who does that? Did Floyd do that? To take the toughest challenge every time? Let me see. Let me take three fights. They're all about going to pay the same. Oh, let me take the toughest fight. And then you're going to always hold him accountable if he doesn't take the toughest, most brutal fight that he can take. But this is Bud rules. This is only uh, this only refers to Bud Crawford. It does not re refer to any other champion in in heavyweight, welterweight, lightweight. It only refer refers to Bud because they don't like Bud. They people don't just people that don't like Bud. They just really don't like him, and they just want him to lose. People who like Bud, they really like him, and because. The, the man is determined in that ring. He done knocked out 11 or 12 straight people. They like him because of his skill set. That's it. We don't care about no money, no flash or whatever the, you know, the other people might like their fighters for. We like him because of the way he fights. As far as him going up there and fighting the, the toughest guy, he don't have to. He earned it. Just like every other great champion, Bud Crawford earned the right to go if there's three fights out there and none of them are in his di direct division and not and, and they're not champions out there, which he has, there's no champions out there. Go ahead and fight whoever you want and make your money. And then when you can get a champion, then go ahead and fight him. But yet he wanted to fight Canelo and you and you were the main one saying, Oh, you don't want him to fight Canelo, even though he's been ducking Benavides for how long? He's been ducking Benavides. So if you can't, if he's not going to fight Benavides, why weren't you on the, on, on um, Crawford's side and said, yeah, why don't you fight Crawford if you're not going to fight Benavides? But you said you don't even want to see the fight. This is when I say it's hate. It's hate. Because That's what I'm saying. It's hate. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually address you. Then I'm going to continue the show because you didn't address any of my points. But I need you when you come up here to not be so emotional and not talk over yourself and contradict yourself because in the same in the same rant you just went on you you admitted number one that Chris Eubanks Jr. is an easier fight than Jamel right. Charlo while right. shitting on Jamel Charlo at the same time then you turn around and said why we shouldn't Bud have the right to get more money for taking on less fights and that's where you and I will already always be diametrically opposed we'll always be against each other because. I don't give a fuck about what you think somebody has earned. The motherfucker wants to make as much money as possible, Terrence. He wants to get the biggest bag possible. He wants to charge you more to go to his fight, if you even go to his fights. He wants to fight on pay-per-view. He has the one of the biggest paywalls up around his fights than anybody in boxing. Bro. So when you do that, 
yes, as a fan, I want to see you take on a real challenge. You cannot, you cannot get to a point in boxing, and this is why the bottom of my shit, the takes age like fine wine. Just admit to me that you like Terrence Crawford more than you like boxing. Just admit the shit, and we can we can we can get that shit all the way over with, bro. Because everything you said is complete bullshit, bro. The man, the man does not have the right to have two fights and say, well, I'm just going to take the easier one because I already fought Earl Spence. Was Earl Spence's whole fucking career or something? Was that like, is that like the end of his shit? Like once he beat Earl Spence, the shit's over with. There's nothing left to accomplish. You can't go be a four division champion. You can't go try to be undisputed in three weight classes. You can't, you can't get Derrick James entire fucking, uh, fucking people, uh, stable all the way the fuck out of here. A motherfucker, you've been talking all this shit to. You can't, you can't do that. Like, come on, bro. You did like it's like I'm Nostradamus out this, but you literally are proving my point that you love Bud so much you could give a fuck about what's best for fans. You know that Jamel is the tougher fight. You said it out your own mouth. You know that Jamel is the better fighter between him and Chris Eubanks Jr. But you love Bud Crawford so much that you are arguing that it's okay for him to fight Chris Eubanks Jr. because he has earned the right in your mind to take on lesser opponents for the most money as possible. The same shit we criticized Canelo for. You bought up Floyd Mayweather. He deserved criticism for that. Ray Leonard, criticism, bro. These fighters need to be fighting the absolute best competition when it's available. If Booth Ennis is food and he's just a mandatory, fuck him up then. If Virgil Ortiz is green and he's just some scrub at 154, fuck him up then. If Jamel Charlo is trash and he ain't, and don't nobody want to see him, show us what Canelo should have did to his ass. Because I tell you what, Erickson Lubin show, shows a lot of heart compared to Chris Eubanks Jr. I tell you what, Jamel Charlo don't have to live in his daddy's shadow like Chris Eubanks Jr. do. You cannot take up for this fight and tell me that you like boxing, too. You can take up for this fight and tell me that you like Bud Crawford more than you like boxing. So I'll end it with this. And it's a yes or no question. It's a yes or no question, bro. And then I'm going to keep cooking because I got other topics I got to get to. Do you like Terrence Bud Crawford more than you like the sport of boxing? No. Okay. All right, then, bro. I appreciate you coming up. I got to keep it moving. Yep. I don't believe you. Your actions don't show that, bro. But I appreciate you for always coming through. Shout out to the homie A1 Hoop Zone. 20 piece. No biscuit in the super chat. Motherfucker, just tell us you scared without telling us you scared. What other fan base don't want to see they fight or fight the best and cool with a motherfucker just fighting anybody? The fuck wrong with these dudes? Motherfucker weird, especially this dude. Terrence gonna ride for Bud, bro. He gonna ride for Bud nonstop. I ain't, I ain't mad at him. I just, he's dead ass wrong, bro. <laughs> he's dead ass wrong, and he know it. That's why he keep. That's why he contradict and talk over himself, bro. It's an easier fight. Why wouldn't he take the easier fight? Why would you take the tough fight? So you just want him to take an easy ass fight? Fuck out of here, man. Ronnie Bravo, five piece, no biscuit in the super chat. I'll always ride with Bud, but no, no night, no one is a no, but not night. I think he mean no one. That autocorrect probably got his ass. No one is above reproach. And I see Nick J in the building. Y'all go check out the Queens of Boxing Talk. Go check out um what they're doing over there, man. Great work. Um, and everybody else that got a channel, man. I think I shouted out everybody I saw with A1 Hoops on. Talking that basketball shit. Um, I don't know if a phenomenal show got a channel, but the name is Phenomenal Show. If they got a channel, go check them out. Melvin their podcast. Um, everybody, bro. D Free was in here. All the brothers and sisters that got challenged that fuck with me, man. Go check them out, bro. Um, but anyway, uh, but no one is above reproach, says Ronnie. Boots, Charlo, Canelo, Timzu, Adams, Earl rematch, or Janabek, nothing less. Here's the thing, too, Ronnie. And I miss you, Rizel. I got you though. I see you. I, I see you, super chat. I'm about to get to it. Here's my thing, though, Ronnie. Feel me, bro. I am a good enough debater, bro, and I got enough facts to where I could argue that the nigga ducking boots. In my sleep if I wanted to. If I really wanted to go there, I could really just debate and win 
any debate against anybody saying that he duck boots, bro. But I'm willing to be fair, bro. I'm willing to be reasonable. I'm willing to say, look, bro, you ain't got to fight boots. You did, you did, you did what you need to do at 147. No, no problem. No problem, bro. Drop them belts, get out the young king way, and go see what you can do at 154 against the best that 154 has to offer. In the names that you mentioned, Tim Zoo, Keith Thurman, winner, Jamel Charlo. If you go to 160, Jenna Beck, Adamas, Earl rematch at 154. Bro, I'm willing to be fair, bro. Even though I don't like the motherfucker, I'm not gonna hate on him, bro, and just say some shit a duck when it's not a duck. He ain't ducking boots if he if he if he'd have took that Jamel Charlo. Erickson Lubin deal because the Earl Smith rematch fell through because either PBC ain't wanted no more or Earl changed his mind or they couldn't come to an agreement, whatever. Bro, that's a good deal. You can't criticize that shit. It's a good deal with some good fights to keep you busy, keep you paid. My fuckers be tripping, bro. We got uh, Rod Zilla with the two piece, no biscuit in the super chat. To be the best, you got to beat them or make them duck. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. Madrimov looks good at one. Yeah, yeah, the dude, Israel Madrimov. They calling him the new Triple G. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see that shit. But Madrimov can fight. Um, picked him by knockout to to beat the Russian up, and he did that shit last week. Shout out to him for making me look like a genius to the channel members and shit. But yeah, Israel Madrimov, um, nice fighter, bro. Nice, nice fighter, bro. What Jay say? You can't tell me, bud. Don't have a great resume. Three time Ring Magazine. That's a great accomplishment. And two-time undisputed apart from anyway, who's doing it like Terrence Buckcroft? Nobody, not Tank Earl, all these PBC fighters. Here's the problem, bro. I'm gonna learn you something, Jay, because you knew here. Here's the problem, bro. Accomplishments don't matter near as much as who you got them against, which is why his undisputed title at 147 means more than the undisputed title at 140 when you grade them because beating and don't go for undisputed versus beating Earl for undisputed. See how the shit just ring different. I beat Julius and don't go for undisputed. I beat Earl Spence for undisputed. Accolades is cool, bro. But it's about who you fight. Because I'll take your monster in a way. I'll take your Terrence Bud Crawford. And I'll give you a 23-year-old by the name of Jesse Bam Rodriguez. And I'll talk to you how the four kings of his era are Carlos Quadras, Juan Francisco Estrada, Juan Versailles. And Chocolatito. And I'll talk to you about how Jesse Bam Rodriguez has set himself up to already fight three of the four of those guys at 23 years old. I'll talk to you about Carlos Quadras. I'll talk to you about Rung Vasai, who's the only man to knock out Chocolatito. He's about to fight Juan Francisco Estrada, who beat Chocolatito twice. See, I care about shit like that. Who you fight? Who you fight, Jay? Now, Jesse Bam, Jesse Bam Rodriguez. I don't know if he got a ring magazine or not. I know he's never been undisputed. Oh, my bad. I left one out. Didn't Jesse Bam Rodriguez just give Sonny Edwards the UKI? Nick J say Boxiana made it up. That's where she heard it first. Did, didn't Jesse Bam Rodriguez just give Sonny Edwards the UKI too? So I hear you, bro. I, I hear what you're saying. And, and accomplishments are great. It's nice to have them. But... Earl Spence, Julius and Dungo, Mean Machine, Sean Porter's cool, Cal Brook, or Sonny Edwards, Rung Versailles, Carlos Codridge, Juan, Juan Francisco Estrada. Like, and you and he only 23 years old. So I hear you, bro. I care about who they fight, though. Yeah, I care about who they fight, bro. So just some insight since you knew here, bro. Like, that shit cool. Like, ain't nothing wrong with it. It's good. That was a good accomplishment. But those are accomplishments at 36 years old. Those are the fighters he fought at 36 years old. Jesse Bam Rodriguez did not already fought. You can literally compare the people he's fought and who he actually got in the ring with over... What Bud Crawford does, and Bud Crawford got over a decade head start on Jesse Bam Rodriguez. Let that shit sink in, homeboy. 
Let that shit sink in, homeboy. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. He got a decade, over a decade head start on Jesse. And Jesse already done fought fighters that's comparable to who he fought. Let that shit sink in, man. Moving on. Moving on. Because I got smoke for more people. Y'all ain't above this shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all ain't above this shit, bro. Yeah. Yeah, y'all, y'all. Y'all worse than Bud fans. Yeah. Y'all are worse than him and his fans. Because motherfucking Canelo Alvarez been going on Chris Eubanks Jr. hunts for years, bro. For y- y'all are worse then Bud Crawford, just tell me you like Canelo Alvarez more than you like boxing, and we can keep this shit moving, bro. And yes, I'm down to catch another body if one, because Canelo fans don't fuck with me, bro. They don't come up here because they know it's too much. It's too much, bro. It's way too much. But if you want to try, you welcome. Link in the chat. But I need y'all to just tell the world, man. Listen, we don't really give a fuck about boxing. Listen, bro, we don't really we don't really give a fuck about boxing, bro. We just we just want what's best for Canelo. We want Canelo to get his money. We want Canelo to keep winning so we can eat tacos, bust pinatas, and drink beer on Cinco de Mayo. Just come out and say it to us, bro. Just tell us you want to eat your barbacoa. You want to eat your burrito tacos and shit. You know what I'm saying? You want to sip on your tequila. You want to drink your beer and shit. Just tell us that shit, bro. Just come out and tell us this shit. Because if you capping for this motherfucker, bro, lying to you over and over and over and over again, bro, man, you, I, you can't fuck, you, you, I, I can't fuck with your, your, your stance on boxing and shit, bro. You, you want to talk about holding the motherfucker. No, that motherfucker looked you in your face two weeks ago. Yes, I re-signed my deal with Boxer Azteca. No Mexican on Mexican crime. I will be fighting in America. He looked two weeks ago, bro. Go look it up. Maybe it's two and a half weeks ago and shit. Yeah, that shit good, Ronnie, but not today. I'm on the ass today. Pause. <laughs> I'm on him today, bro. He just told you motherfuckers three weeks ago, I'd never fight a Mexican. Lie straight to your face. And y'all, yeah, it's Canelo, Mexican people. I never fight a Mexican. I'll be fighting an American. Because he thought he was about to bully Al Hammond. You gonna, I'm going to fight Jamal Charlo. I'm, I'm going to fight Jamal Charlo. He fits my criteria, goddammit. One fight in three years. He's drunk. And he ain't never fought at 168. I need that work for the 35 M's. He thought he was about to bully a motherfucker. I never fight. I never fight another Mexican. Told y'all that shit for years. What y'all, what do you do? Who he fighting? Put a hundred in the chat if Jaime Munguia is from Mexico. You sound like Southpaw talking about Canelo. Word. Word. Sound like Southpaw, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sound like Southpaw, huh? Sound like Southpaw. Okay, yo, sounding like Southpaw. Let me see. Oh, looks like Bullet. I already got your ass. Yep, never mind. <laughs> yes, Nick J. Yes. Tell Boxing Honor to get a fighter, man. Yes. Go to his box. So, everyone that wants to know what I'm referring to, when he announced his box ass Tekka deal, when he renewed his deal, when he renewed his deal with the Mexican TV station, box ass Tekka, he said there will be no Mexican on Mexican crime. I'm fighting an American. Lie to your face. And now you're fighting Jaime Munguia. 
Also, he don't have to fight David Benavidez. This motherfucker was willing to walk away from his deal with PBC because they tried to put David Benavidez on the contract, bro. And you know what y'all did, bro? Just tell us you like Canelo more than boxing, bro. You know what you did? Well, I mean, they should have put they should have put David Benavidez on the contract in the first place. That's not Canelo's fault. Yeah, go check it out, Nick J. Go look, go, go look it out. Uh, all you got to type in Canelo Alvarez announces renewal of his deal with Box Azteca. They did an interview with him. You should be able to find all the quotes right there. You should be able to find all the quotes right there. Just tell me you like him more than you like boxing. Tay Tay, I see you in the building. Just, just tell him, Johnny Thunder, what's up? Just tell him that you like him more than you like boxing. Because you know that's some bullshit to anybody with a brain. Oh, so you mean, so let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. They should have put David Benavidez on the contract. They should have put him on the contract for Canelo Alvarez. But when they tried to put him on the contract, Canelo Alvarez walked away to try to go do a deal with the zone, but couldn't. So what makes y'all believe that if they put him on the contract, that he would have signed that motherfucker? Make it make sense, bro. Like, so they should have put him on the contract. But when they tried to put him on the contract, Canelo walked away and came back and restructured his deal to a one fight deal. What makes you think that they, if they put him on the contract to begin with, Canelo would have even signed in the first place, bro? How does how does that work? If he ducked them then, he would have ducked them the first time, too. Y'all let that shit slide. You make excuses for him pulling up Jamel Charlo, undisputed versus undisputed. Y'all said you wanted him to fight Jamel Charlo. He's fighting Jamel Charlo, and you still complain, KO. He's fighting Jamel Charlo. We wanted him to fight like y'all, y'all and, and you let him play with your intelligence. Then you come over here and you try to play with mine. That's why y'all motherfuckers won't hit my link, because you ain't finna play stupid with me, bro. Yes, we wanted him to fight Jamel Charlo at 154. Yes, we wanted him to fight Demetrius Andrade at 154 and 160. Yes, we wanted him to fight Jamal Charlo at 160, bro. Y'all said y'all wanted him to fight him. Yeah, damn near a decade ago, bro. He's fighting him now. What's the problem? The problem is the motherfuckers pulling him up two weight classes. He's pulling him up two weight classes, bro. That's the problem. You, but but what about what about um Triple G? Everybody was complaining that Canelo didn't fight Triple G a third time. Another time he lied to you, motherfuckers. Did he not say he'll never fight Triple G again? Yes or no, bro? Did he look you in your face and say he disrespected me, people? He disrespected me. I'll never fight Triple G again. Did he do that or did he not do that? I believe he did. And then what did he do? Turn right around, pull Triple G up to 168, fight his 40-year-old ass to get a bag, bro. This man chasing easy bags for the least amount, for the least amount of resistance possible, bro. Matty Yoel, 10 piece. No biscuit in the super chat. He ain't even say no. He's just showing support. I appreciate you, Matty. I appreciate you, Matty. I understand, bro. I get it. I saw Joseph do it earlier. I see your comments done. Dot. I see you guys. I understand. You want to deflect. You want to deflect. This is a boxing cha channel. It is Knockout Boxing 86 TV. It is not Tank Boxing 86 TV. Okay? I understand, bro. I know. I know you want to get sidetracked. I know you want to try to try to try to take the conversation somewhere else. But your boy gonna get this work. And if you want to defend him, you can hop out the comments and you can hit the link. Explain to me why he wanted to fight Badu Jack 20 pounds below the weight limit and still put Badu, Badu Jack belt on the line. Explain that shit to me. Explain that shit to me. Maybe, maybe I need to run that back for you. Explain to me why he tried to fight Badu Jack old ass for his cruiserweight title and make Badu Jack fight him 20 pounds below the weight limit. 
Explain that shit. Explain to me how you motherfuckers can criticize Tank Davis, right? For rehydration clauses and catch weights. Okay, no problem. Now explain to me where the smoke's at for Canelo. Where's the smoke at for him trying to take a cruise away, make him make 180, and put a rehydration clause on him? Where that shit at? Hmm? 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 Nothing. You ain't got nothing for me. Yeah. The dude's an opportunist and he's scared to lose. Yeah. Scared to fucking lose. Y'all want to talk about how he sent Caleb Plant a contract the first time and only gave Caleb Plant four weeks to prepare for the fight? Or did we forget that shit? We forgot. Y'all, that, that shit didn't happen. That shit didn't happen. The phenomenal show. Ten piece. No biscuit out the bitch. Just paying my dues, bro. They appreciate you. Appreciate you. I understand. Freak when I get it, bro. I know. I know. I know. Y'all want to talk to me about Tank. I get it. I, I know. I know. I understand. I know. But again, I need you guys to just tell me, man, we just like Canelo more than boxing, bro. We just want whatever's best for Canelo. We, we, we just want whatever's best when, when it comes to Canelo. Man, come on. Just let us make a KO. We like Canelo more than boxing. And when Canelo retires, we don't know what we're going to do with ourselves. Just say it, bro. Just come out. Let the world know. You know what I'm saying? Come out the closet. You hiding in the closet as a true boxing fan. You hide. You hiding in the closet as a true boxing fan. All right? When in reality, you really want to come out the closet as a Canelo Alvarez fan. Yeah, just come out the closet, bro. I'll indulge you before I move to the next topic. What am I defending Tank Davis about, Dundada? Hmm? See, unlike you, I'll call a Tank fight trash. I'll criticize Tank Davis. To this day, I've never seen you criticize Canelo Alvarez, and you've been following my channel for years. Let's do a test. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Put in the chat right now that Canelo Alvarez is trash for pulling up Jamel Charlo two weight classes. Let's do a test here. Let's do a test here. Let's see what you got. Let's see if you can keep it real. Let's see if you can keep it real or if your thumb going to cramp up when you try to type this shit. Type in the chat right now, Dundada, that Canelo Alvarez is trash for trying to weight drain Badu Jack. Type it in the chat, bro. Let's see. Let's see if the let's see if the pot let's see if the pot calling the kettle what the pot should be when the kettle and the pot and the kettle and the pot is black. Let's let's let, let's let, let's see it. Let's see it. And this is why you can't fuck with me. You too fake, bro. Look. Look at what you're typing. Look at look look at how much look at how bad you own Canelo Johnson, bro. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> look at you, bro. This is you, man. This is you. Look, look, look. This is you, bro. You're killing yourself. <laughs> you killing your own self. You know what? All right. All right, cool. Cool. Call Canelo Alvarez a liar. Call Canelo Alvarez a liar for saying he'll never fight Mexicans and then fight them. Or call him a liar for saying he'll never fight Triple G and then fight them. Call him a liar. Call him a liar. Done, daughter. Call Canelo Alvarez a liar, bro. Call him a liar. <sighs> K 
Canelo is a liar. Now, now we're getting somewhere. I understand that took a lot. I get it. I understand that took a lot. Now, we can address some of the things you said. Canelo Alvarez being a 154-pound natural fighter, the man has been at 168 for years. He went undisputed at 168. He went as high as 175. He is acclimated to the weight. He is big as shit. He can never make 154 pounds again in his life. 168 is his weight class. He pulled up Jamel Charlo, two weight classes to a weight class he had never fought at before. He also was trying to pull Jamal Charlo up to a weight class that he never fought at before. Is Canelo Alvarez a warrior, Dundada? Is, is Canelo Alvarez a warrior? Is he a dog? Is he is he is he a savage in the ring? And see, here we go with the lies, bro. Thank Father, what's up? I'm just cooking Dundada, you know, easy, easy shit. You're lying. You're lying. Tank Davis dropped down to Leo Santa Cruz's weight class and took his belt. You're lying, bro. You're too easy, bro. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with you, bro. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Tank Davis fought Leo Santa Cruz in his weight class, bro. The link is in the chat. You ain't got to wait for nothing. The link is in the chat, bro. But there's nothing to talk about. You saying shit that don't like that ain't even true. I'm off of you. I gotta get this Devin Haney work. I gotta get this. I gotta get this Devin Haney work, bro. I gotta get this shit. Bullet Joseph Demonte. Thank Father. Just tell me you like the business, the business of boxing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, okay. Uh, on May 11th, got some news for y'all real quick. Oh, that's fire. So on May 11th, Carlos Quadras will be taking on Andrew Maloney for the interim junior bantamweight title, bro. Oh, that's going to be a banger of a fight for those of y'all that, that really love boxing. Damn, yeah, it's on top rank. Carlos Quadras versus Andrew Maloney, May 11th. Whose card is that? Hold on. Ooh, that's on the Loma Cambosos undercard, bro. Damn, that's fire. So Loma Cambosos is one fight. They just confirmed Carlos Quadras versus uh, Andrew Maloney, and then it's supposed to be another title fight. Damn, bro. So Canelo Munguia on uh, May 4th. Must in a way Luis Neri on May the 6th. Loma Cambosos May 11th with Carlos Quadras and Andrew Maloney. And then um, Navarrete versus Berenchek on May 18th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here for all of that shit. But just so y'all know, man, I just got this shit in. So um, Carlos, Condru, Carlos Quadras, Andrew Maloney. Straight up. Nah, hell nah. Hell no. Do you know what they saying going to be on Tank card, bro? They saying you're going to have Tank versus Frank Martin, David Benavidez versus Govstick, and fucking um, Ryo versus um, Edwin De Los Santos part two. Come on, Truth. Come on, Truth. Come on, bro. Hell no. You bugging. That's a good card, but come on. Loma versus Cambosos, one-way fucking fight. Tank versus Frank, one-way fucking fight. But Frank Martin is better than fucking Cambosos. Bro. But anyway, 
Tank and Frank is a better fight than Loma Cambosos. Then David Benavidez, Govstick, Carlos Condres, and Andrew Maloney. Come on, bro. Carlos Quadras, Andrew Maloney. Come on, bro. And then Ryo versus Edwin De La Santos part two? Nah, bro. Fuck no. Hell no, nah, bro. Hell no. Nah. But that's a good ass card, though. Rosilla, who are you talking about, bro? Who are you talking about, bro? No, you so cap. First of all, you know you don't believe what you say. The nigga, you gave the nigga the nickname Bozo, bro. <laughs> you don't even believe what you type it. You accidentally telling the truth in what you call the man. You calling the man Bozo because you know he trash, bro. You know he garbage, bro. That's why you couldn't even help yourself. You can't even give him a better nickname than Bozo, bro. You calling the man Bozo, dog. While saying he in a better fight. You calling him Bozo because he trash. I don't care if he's a former unified champion, dog. I don't care, bro. How do you look in the ring? Maxi Hughes made him look like shit. Maxi Hughes got five losses, bro. Five fucking losses to journeymen and shit. And Maxi Hughes, no one's giving him a chance against Williams and Pay. What's up, Rick Timms? Anyway, back to this shit. Don't, don't, don't get me off my square, true. Don't get me off my square. Use your eyes. You know boxing too well, bro. You know boxing too well to try to have a resume conversation with me. You can look at the fighters, bro. Anyway. Just tell me y'all only like Devin Haney fans. Hey, listen, listen. Devin Haney people, listen, listen. Just tell me you only like the business of boxing when it's in favor of Devin Haney, bro. Just say that. Just say, look, knockout, bro. I, I really only be feeling, you know what I'm saying? I really only be feeling the business of boxing shit when, when Devin is the A side, bro. If we talking Devin Regis, I love that shit, bro. I love that shit, KO. I love when Devin's able to be the challenger and make Regis go to the bay. I love that shit, KO. That shit make me that shit make me feel good on the inside, KO. KO, I love I love when Devin, I love when Devin can can get Loma to give him more money, man. Cause he's the A side and shit now, bro. I love that shit. Just say it, bro. Just say, I love, I love when Devin can try to 75, 25 Shakur Stevenson, bro. Just, just tell me, just tell me the truth, bro. But, but knockout, when Devin's in a position where he can't dictate shit, bro, I don't love the business of boxing no more, bro. <laughs> just admit it. Just, I don't really, love, I don't really like that, that. I don't like it when you say, when you call Devin Haney a B-side ass nigga. Like, I don't like that, KO. That hurts my feelings. Just, just tell me the truth, bro. <laughs> Just tell me the truth, bro. Just, just tell me the fucking truth. I don't really, I don't really like the only one that can take it is Dank Father, because Dank will just fire some shit right back. The rest of y'all get soft in the motherfucker. Just I don't like when you call Devin Haney a B-side ass nigga, bro. I don't like it when you tell Devin Haney to bend the knee. <laughs> that one gets y'all real hot, don't it? <laughs> bend the knee? Who the fuck is Tank to bend the knee to? He bent the knee to Cambo, so it was different. He wasn't in the same position that he's in now. <laughs> All right. You mean what? He's an even bigger B-side to this motherfucker that we talking about? You mean he's an even bigger B-side <laughs> to Tank <laughs> than he is to Cambo, so he bent his knee to him. <laughs> Y'all get mad in the motherfucker. Man, fuck this shit. Send the offer. Send the offer with the shit in it that my fighter publicly said he won't agree to. Send that shit. Send that shit. <laughs> Come on, bro. But when this Devin Haney, yeah, Devin 75, 25, take it or leave it. Shakur Duck, he ain't take it. He ain't take it or leave it. This Devin Haney, Shakur ain't Shakur. Ain't never been on pay-per-view. How many pay-per-views Shakur? So Y'all love that conversation when it's Devin and Shakur. I remember I got to ask it so much. How many pay-per-views Shakur sold, KO? KO, how many pay-per-views Shakur Stevenson ever sold, KO? Devin Haney sold 150000 How many Shakur sell? Shakur Stevenson would have got way more money fighting Devin Haney. He should have just gave in. He should have just gave him what he want. 
He should just gave him what he want. Say, bro, so that means Devin should just give Tank what he want, right? No, nah, they should negotiate. Now you want to negotiate. <laughs> now you want to negotiate, huh? <laughs> Now, now you believe in negotiations, huh? Shakur, take that shit or leave that shit. Shakur, you better, man, Shakur better take that shit, leave that shit, bro. If he if he leave it, then he ain't want to fight. Nigga, ain't no negotiation. Nigga, 75, 25, no negotiation. No negotiation. 75, 25, no negotiation. <laughs> that business get flipped on you, motherfuckers. So, so. If Tank send that motherfucker off at 135, then he should just take that shit. He should just take that shit, right? Ain't no nego. Nah, bro, they got to negotiate because he Devin bring something to the table, too. Devin, Devin bring something to the table, too, KO. You picking him to lose or something, bullet? <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> what you mean? And, and Dank, I'm going to always separate you, dog. I'm always separate you Texas shit, man. Texas shit. You been firing back about this shit. And you ain't been soft not one time. You ain't never got in your feelings, bro. It's just fun to us. Some people take the shit serious. And Joseph and them for the most part, too, bro. Joseph and them, they the homies, too. I'm just fucking with them. But yeah, dang. You one of the real ones. You one of the realest, bro. Uh, Bullet. How you gonna shock the world, bro? By losing? <laughs> the fuck you talking about, bro? How you gonna shock the world, bro? The only thing that would shock the world is if Ryan beat his ass, bro. What are you? Are you picking against your fighter, bro? What? You, Ryan got you shook. You think the Illuminati gonna help him? What the fuck is you talking about? Shock the world, bro, by losing? Or you saying they gonna sell out, bullet? You want me to show you these? Let me see. Let me, you know what? Tell me what you're talking about, bullet. I need to know, bro. You gotta answer. You can't just laugh and shit, bro. You can't just laugh, bro. Nah, bro. What? How's he gonna shock the fucking world, bro? And y'all smash the like button while I'm talking to my homie bullet. Sometimes y'all, if you new here, sometimes with the homies and 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 the sisters and shit, sometimes you know we'll just get to having the conversation back and forth. So y'all excuse me and bullet while we had this conversation, bullet. How he gonna shock the world? I need to know. Big Hano's gonna embarrass and beat Ryan so bad, not even you gonna see it coming. I see it coming. I don't really, what do you mean? Listen, bro. What's good in the future? I see you. Listen, bro. The only thing is two things that were shocked. Me in a Devin Haney Ryan Garcia fight at this point with all the information I have. Shock number one would be if they do really good numbers. If they do really good numbers, that would shock me. I'd be surprised, pleasantly surprised. I'd be happy because that would be a good thing for Devin, right? So that would that would be a shock to me, right? The other shock would be if Ryan Garcia wins the fight, bro. That would be a shock to me. Right? That would be a shock to me. Phoenix says, to do good numbers with tickets, going to need to say to ask Diddy to hand out tickets to people like, take that, take that, take that. Damn, Phoenix. That's fucked up. That is fucked up. That is not that is not cool, bro. Ryan gonna win the trip to the hospital after getting his ass beat. I bet KO gonna give Haney all the credit for the pay-per-view numbers. LMAO. Um, I don't know what you mean. I really wish you would hit the link though. You talk a lot, bro. You talk a lot in the comments, bro. I really wish you would hit the link though. Is it still no undercar? Yeah, no undercar. No undercar, bro. I 
All right, we're moving on, bro. I got to talk about this shit. And then it looks like we ain't got no smoke today. So since this is the last topic, I will drop the link after this for anybody that want to come up. Um, While Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney and Bill Haney were trading insults about people's wives and drug cheat allegations and Golden Boy was fucking up. The motherfucking uh, promotion of the fight between Devin and Ryan while Shakur Stevenson was retiring from the sport of boxing and then unretiring. And while Teofimo Lopez was um, doing his crazy shit that he that he always do on a daily basis while um, Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence's rematch has been on and off again and on again and off again and while Jerome Boots in this is trying to get somebody, Lord, anybody to fight him. And Subrail Matias is going over the match room. And Jerry Big Baby Anderson is speeding, making the police chase him and shit. While all this shit been going on. Tank Davis been training. <laughs> Tank Davis been training. This whole fucking time. I told y'all he been training this whole goddamn time. And y'all think I just be talking. Y'all think I don't have insight. Y'all think people don't be telling me shit. I told you guys last year when he got out in July. Say, bro, he was in that bitch getting his mental right, meditating, getting closer to trying to change himself. I told y'all a week later, I heard he went straight to the gym and he been in the gym nonstop. The man is 138 pounds four months from his fight. That means he has nothing to do but train. His skills, his strength, and game plan because he's already in shape. He can make weight for the fight tomorrow. Y'all should have caught the motherfucker when he was partying and drinking and doing stupid shit, bro. And it shows an amount of respect for Frank Martin. An amount of respect for his craft. And an amount of respect for the gifts that, that he's been given. And he's taking the shit serious. Now, I do want to ask y'all. How come your favorite fighter don't fight close to his walk around weight? If they if they went back to old school rules tomorrow and made motherfuckers start weighing in the day of the fight, would your fighter be able to make the way he fighting there right now? Or would he have to jump up two, two or three weight classes? I understand you want to age him to 30, but he's 29. I, I'm asking. I, I understand, bro. I get it. What what shows more confidence? A motherfucker that's willing to fight close to the weight he walk around at when he in shape or a motherfucker that need to cut 15, 20, 25 pounds? I'm, You know, because if a motherfucker, if a motherfucker really get on some grimy shit and like, yo, I'm walking around 138 in shape. Let me see what this 130 hitting on. Motherfucker, y'all gonna be mad then, right? Or shit, I'm walking around 138 and shit, bro. I'm feeling good and shit. I think I can cut 12 more pounds down to 126. Who got more confidence, bro? I ain't even naming no fighter. You ain't got to get in your in your feelings, bro. Who got more confidence, bro? The fighter that fights at his walk around weight or the fighter that needs to cut down 20 to 25 pounds, bro? Why 
why aren't y'all answering my questions? Why are y'all talking to me about shit when he was 24, 25? The nigga's 29 now. Why are we talking about shit from four, five years ago? Talk to me about right now. Talk to me about the fact that he's showing more discipline than your favorite fighters. If they in the gym, but they they in the gym training, 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 training. Why they why why they fighting 15, 20 pounds below what they weigh? I thought we I thought I thought dogs, you know what I mean? You supposed to be a dog, don't dog. Ain't it more dog to fight motherfuckers that's bigger than you? What shows more dog? Cutting down a bunch of weight to fight small motherfuckers or cutting down a minimal amount of weight to fight big motherfuckers? I'm just asking for a friend. I don't really... I, You know what I'm saying? I, I don't really... I don't, I don't really know. You know what I mean? I don't really, I don't really know what, what the answer is. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to figure out what we own. You know what I mean? Because y'all love to praise your favorite fighters for how disciplined they are. Oh, my God's a gym rat. My guy trains in the gym year-round, stays in the gym year-round. But when somebody else start doing that shit, he's just doing his fucking job. I don't know what the fuck you want credit for. He's just doing his fucking job and shit. That's one of the things y'all love about your favorites, though. Shakur Stevenson's a gym rat. He always in the gym. Bud says he's always in the gym. Bo Max says he's always in the gym. Shakur Stevenson putting in that work. He's sharp. He's sharp. He this. He that. Devin Haney's a gym rat. Devin Haney's always in the gym. Devin Haney, that's all he does is jab. He jab and then he holds it, then he goes to sleep, then he wakes up and he jabs. And then when he goes to sleep, he dreams about clinching. <laughs> Devin Haney, jab, jab, grab, go to sleep, clinch, clinch. He clinches his pillow in his sleep for training. He just clinches his pillow, sleeping, clinching, clinching, sleeping, sleeping, clinching. Then he throws a jab in his sleep. His girlfriend, he's just he's just always jabbing and clinching. Y'all love that shit, bro. <laughs> Y'all love that shit. You talk that shit up, and you're always in the gym, always on weight, very professional. Tang it, tang it all, tang it all professional on your ass. Start dedicating himself to his craft and shit. Getting all, hey, tell you when your favorite fighter ever deleted his social media account. Y'all talking, y'all laughing about Tank asking for a crack pipe and shit. Y'all laughing about him, y'all laughing about him asking for a crack pipe and shit. Let Devin Haney try to delete his social media account. Let Shakur Stevens try to delete their social media account. Both them motherfuckers gonna be like, man, I got these cheeseburgers, man, shit. I got these cheeseburgers. Motherfucker gonna be gone for one day. I'm back, y'all. I'm back. Fuck it, I'm back. I'm back, bro. I'm back. You know what I'm saying? Took some time off. I'm locked. I'm still locked in, though. But y'all gonna get these Twitter work. <laughs> you gonna get this Twitter work around this bitch? <laughs> Say, dog. What? Hey, man. What you talking about, Justin? Let me see, man. Y'all gonna get this? Y'all, hey, man. Your favorite fighter. Your favorite fighter ain't talking about that. I shouldn't even read this shit for a three piece, but I'm gonna read it because you my homeboy, man. Shout out to Jonathan Jackson with the three piece in the cash out, man. He said, does he want a cookie for being disciplined? No, 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 no cookie. It's just your fighter couldn't fuck with him when he wasn't disciplined. Your fighter, your fighter, your fighter, your fighter got hands put on him by a motherfucker fresh out the plane taking shots, partying with Adrian Broner and shit. Your fighter damn sure ain't trying to fuck with nothing that's disciplined. In shape, locked in, been training just for him. Twelve rounds, ready to go. To get stronger as the fight go on. That's another thing. That's another thing y'all gotta stop lying about, bro. Stop talking to me about like, bro. Start watching fights and studying shit. Or I'm really gonna have to start like sunning y'all for real. I be trying to let some of y'all make it. Let me give y'all another badass talking point real quick. Let me give y'all another badass talking point that y'all use all the time, bro. But before I give y'all that talking point, before I give y'all that talking point, let me get back to that man in shape already, and I'm glad because Frank Martin is a damn good fighter. 
And I'm glad that he's taking Frank serious. Ain't no excuses because you got the whole camp to just train your strength, get ready. And the motherfucker he working with is a bad motherfucker. It's like Mac. Man, what was his motherfucking name, bro? His strength and conditioning coach for this fight. What's this motherfucking name, man? Y'all go, y'all, so y'all can go look him up. Found this shit, bro. Mark uh Mac Method Fitness. Mac Method Fitness is gonna be his strength and conditioning coach that he's gonna be in camp with. It's all he's gonna be doing, and he's gonna need it for Frank Martin. Frank Martin's a damn good fighter, bro. Frank Martin's a damn good fighter, bro. But let me get y'all, let me let me let me let y'all in on something, bro. Shout out to the homie Jonathan Jackson back. Hold on. He dropped another one, bro. Back in the uh cash out with the three-piece no biscuit. He say, uh, Dev walked out with that 20k bag at 16 unbothered. Unbothered. Okay. Okay. He was unbothered. His legs disagree with you. The 25 unanswered punches that he let Tank Davis fire off on his ass disagree with you. And Devin was 16 now. Y'all going to tell me he was 15 in a minute. And it was it's funny that he walked out with the bag just because Tank didn't knock him out. <laughs> hey, man, he ain't knocked me out. Pay me my money. <laughs> Shout out to Joseph Jackson with the five piece in the cash out. KO, he 29, just now disciplined. Dev been since 16. Cool. Why Devin got to cut 25 pounds? Cool. And you understand that if that wasn't a sparring session, it was a real fight, and Devin gets in that type of trouble in a real fight, there is no more sparring. There is no more sp sparring, bro. There is no more sparring. But anyway, back to what you said, Jonathan. All right? About Devin being 16 and being disciplined. Why why he got cut so much weight if he's so disciplined? Joseph. Get out of there, Dev. <laughs> huh, Joseph? Joseph Jackson, huh? Never hurt or wobble in a chopped up video. The person telling him to get out of there, Dev, thought he was hurt. Adrian Broner thought he was hurt. But what you won't talk about is that they told you that part didn't happen. They acted as if it didn't exist. They acted as if it didn't exist. Slogan one with the five piece. But now answer my question because you're not answering my question. You're not answering my question. If Devin is always focused and always in shape, why does he get so big in between fights? Shout out to slogan one with the five piece. No biscuit in the super chat. Tank walked out with a thirty million dollar bag, April two thousand twenty three. Another bag coming. Yeah, he about to get some more money, but more importantly, he's in a good fight. Joseph, the question is very simple: If Devin is disciplined and always in shape, why does he have to cut so much weight to make weight? It's a bad addiction to have, Rizilla, when you're a professional fighter. And it only gets harder as you get older. I didn't ask you, has he ever missed weight? I asked you why he has to cut so much. Cutting weight is a skill. Okay. Well, Tank don't have to cut as much as Errol Spence. And Errol Spence had to cut that much weight because he's undisciplined. Dave Benavidez had to cut that much weight because he's big. Tank don't have to cut that much weight. Tank is 138 pounds right now. Tank weighed in 133 pounds for his fight against Hector. But I would like my question answered, though. About Devin. Can someone answer the question about Devin without bringing up most shit? 
I know you don't want to fall into a trap, and I know that you know a trap is coming, but you just can't really figure out what it is. Oh, he's big. That, thank you. <laughs> Nick J kept it real. He big, KO damn. KO shit. Nigga got to cut so much weight because he big and shit. Cool. Why do big fighters cut a bunch of weight? Why why do big ass fighters cut a bunch of weight? Size advantage, which brings me all the way back around. Who's the confident fighter? The fighter that fights closer to his weight or the fighter that cuts down a bunch of weight? Who's more, who's more confident? The guy that looks for advantages? Or the guy that don't give a fuck. Who's more confident? The guy that fights bigger guys or the guys that shrinks himself down to fight smaller guys? And this ain't just a Devin Haney. Shakur do it too. Y'all making it about Devin because y'all are emotional. Who's more confident? The motherfucker that'll fight a motherfucker closer to his weight or the motherfucker that need an advantage by shrinking down a bunch of weight? Who's more confident? Tank probably really is a 126-pounder, but guess what? We wouldn't want to see that. It'd be unfair. Hmm. KO hates on Devin. Okay. Tell you what. This ain't for Nick J because she'll hit the link. You right here. You right here. You on the clock, homeboy. Or homegirl. Because I don't know you, right? So you confusing yourself with somebody that hits links. Somebody that got their own boxing show. Somebody that's competed on the debate series. Somebody that's judged the debate series. You confusing yourself with one of them. You know what I mean? So let me grab my clock right here. Let me grab my clock. I'll check it in a minute, Jonathan. I got to get this work real quick. Get this clock right here. All right, you got one minute to hit the link, Retro. You're cheerleading a little too much. You're typing a little too much. I want to talk to you. Got one minute. While I wait, I'll read my super chat. Love to come up here. Love you to come up here and tell me how I'm hating. Shout out to the big homie, Big Dog Willie. Five piece, no biscuit in the super chat. Frank Martin is doing an interview with the beautiful queens of the ring from the hospital room. Frank Martin saying, I asked for a UFF from Tank Point. Oh, you saying Tank gonna knock his ass out and then he gonna do an interview with uh Nick Jane Barciano? I got you, I got you, I got you. Hey, they get the, I, I get the, I hope they get the interview, bro. Hope they get the interview anyway. Back to your ass. Back to your ass. You got five seconds. Four seconds. Three, two, one. Get him out of here. <laughs> Get his ass out of here till he hit the link, man. When you hit the link, I'll rent you up. Until then, you're going to watch from the sidelines, homeboy. You gonna watch from the sidelines, homeboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna watch from the sidelines. <laughs> Big dog Willie, need Jay on your helmet. You say that was corny. You cringe. 
No, there's no such thing as white bullies, Jay. Once you make weight, you get it pop. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying, bro. Yeah, you got you to come back retro season when you're ready to hit that link. Anyway, that's really all I got, bro. I think I – so I leave it at this, then I'll drop the link. I got about 45 minutes left. I love the growth. I love the maturity. Someone alluded to it. Is it too late? Is it is it right on time? Obviously, as a Tank fan, I'm going to say it's right on time. He's stepping on shit moving forward. But, bro, I just like – I'm not going to hold y'all. I like the energy. I like how he moving. I like the focus. I like getting off social media and shit. I like him being close to his fight weight. I like the pick of Frank Martin. He could have easily gave us some bullshit Jose Rio Valenzuela fight or some fucking Gary Russell Jr. Um, fight or some bullshit like that. But he coming back over a year out the ring, getting in there with Frank the Ghost fucking Martin. That lets me know that when he say I'm coming at niggas, I'm stepping on shit. All the shit he been saying, bro. You can you can you can take that shit and you can believe it because guess what? You can't go back. You can't go Hector Ryan, Frank Martin, Jose Rayo Valenzuela. Hector Ryan, Frank Martin, Gary Russell Jr. Nah, bro. Hector Ryan, Frank Martin, Shakur Stevens. Hector Ryan, Frank Martin, Vasily Lomachenko. Hector Ryan, Frank Martin, Devin the Dream Haney. It's only so many names over. Motherfucking Frank Martin, bro. Like, so if he stay at 135, right? Frank Martin's here, bro. After Frank Martin, all you got is motherfucking Shakur Stevenson and fucking Lomachenko, bro. What's up, Jay Nori? Me neither, Nick Jay. But the thing about the thing, I, I know it's fucking here. The way Frank, like, Frank Martin don't just be talking like that. The way he went at Tank and Tank going back at him, the shit's done. I'm, I'm good saying the shit's official. Okay, but if you don't like this fight, I don't know what to tell you. I'm excited for this shit. This shit is like Devin Loma to me, like a damn good fight. Where like, yeah, I favor a motherfucker, but you, Frank, ain't no bitch, and ain't no the only hoes over there is Ryan Garcia. But out that count, Earl ain't signing no motherfucker that's gonna lay down, bro. Derek James ain't at. De See, Derek James. Went to Earl and like, yo, is it cool if I train Frank Martin and shit? Like, Derek saw something in Frank, bro. And Frank gonna come to fight. Yeah, I love that. Cause we get to see y'all are gonna get to find out the tank is everything. I tell y'all, he is. when he make that boy, when he take that dog and he put that dog on the leash and he dog walk his ass. And he doing worse than you thought he was gonna do him. And he do like he put Frank in a position. You know how Bud put Earl in a position. We hate to talk about it on this channel. How he put Bud in a position where as an Earl fan, you could never imagine a motherfucker making Earl look like that, bro. I got you, Joseph. Give me a second. You could never imagine that shit, bro. Like you could never just look at Earl and be like, yeah, a motherfucker gonna just, you know what I'm saying, do him the way. The Bud Crawford, you just can't see it coming. And Frank Martin fans, they don't see it coming. They like, man, shit, Frank Martin man, gonna be a good fight. If anything, KO Tank gonna get the controversial decision. If anything, he gonna get the controversial decision out this bitch, KO. I don't know what the fuck you talking about. Like my homie, like Nick J say, dog walk, okay. Rozilla say, nope, 50 push ups, KO. Frank not going for none of that. You know I'm riding. Bro, if it was if it's Earl, Tank, or Jesse Bam Rodriguez, I'm riding. Fuck 50 and make it a hundred. Rodzilla, fuck all that. Fuck all that. 50 a warm-up over here, dog. Come on, bro. 50. We do what's that? Four sets of 65 regular push-up. They're like 240, 20. That's 260 push-ups. Four sets of 25 diamond push up. That's a hundred diamond push. That's a warm up every day, bro. On top of the weight lifting and shit. So you a hundred, bro. Fuck out that. A hundred. A hundred. Bet me a hundred, bro. I'm with that. Bet. Bet. We locked in. Y'all screenshot that shit. Homie say I got a cash out. Let me see what's up. 
We got Jonathan Jackson, two piece, no biscuit. Bam, a weight bully. Got it. Hey, he ain't, listen, he ain't a weight bully, but the motherfucker cutting down a lot of weight. Okay, he ain't a weight bully, but the motherfucker's cutting down a lot of fucking weight. Okay, he was one thirty one when he. I saw how he did, little Sonny. Bro, the motherfucker walked in the ring 131, bro, the night of the fight. Making 112, dog. 112, bro. Cupid, Cupid. 112, bro. He fighting at 112, bro. And he made and he came in the ring 130, bro. Motherfucker big, bro. That motherfucker big, man. <laughs> what you want me to say? But um, bully boxing don't go together. But we got another one. We got the homie. Uh, hold on. Let me let me like my homie shit, man. Cause he don't have to donate. He can just talk shit. But he supporting the grind. My other homie, man, little bro, Joseph Jackson, five piece, no biscuit in the cash out. He say, uh, why did Tank weigh one sixty versus Leo? Is he confident? Number one, I don't know. That he weighed 160. You'd have to show me that. I think your ass is capping. But number two, when he fought Leo Santa Cruz, he was not a disciplined fighter. Was that fight in 2020? That was four years ago, bro. At 25 years old, Tank Davis was on bullshit. He was 100% on bullshit. He did not train properly. He was not dedicated to the sport. But I don't believe you that he was 160. I think you're capping. You have to show me paperwork, sir. You have to show me paperwork. Yeah. Because he was fighting at 135 and went down to 130. Went down to 130. And knocked his ass out. Cold. But anyway, I'm done, bro. Let me I'll let y'all up here, man. I got I got a few, got a few minutes. Let me. Let me unpin this one. Shout out to Terrence being the only one come get the smoke. And shout out to the whole chat, man. Y'all smash that like button. I appreciate y'all support. We got 222 people in the building. Let's get a like check. Try to get the likes up over 200, y'all. We're at 185. I want to drop this link for the community, man, for y'all to come up here and cook. Can we please get the 200 likes real quick, y'all? Mods, can we please get the people to get the likes up real quick, y'all? I'm about to drop this link for anybody want to come up here and cook. But before I do, Mods, can we get a like check? Can we get the likes up to 200 we got 220 people in the building let's see if we can get the likes up to 200 real quick man real real quick i already got the homie paid in full backstage but i gotta get the likes up first we are 12 away we up to 188 we got 188 likes i got the shit i got the shit in the i got the shit in the motherfucking chat box i'm ready to send this goddamn link back out paid in full hurry up and hit that bitch before i took it down you say oh i'm in this bitch ko but the rest of y'all, if you want to come up here, man, if you want to talk boxing mods, please get them to get the likes up. It still says we at 188. Can I get 12 people to hit the like button, please? Wookie Woo say, stop holding up traffic. He can't stand no rubbernecking people, man. We up to 198. We jumped up 10. Two more people, please. Two more people, please. Don't make me go into preacher mode out there, bitch. Can I get, can I get a like? I feel a like coming from over here. Can I get a like? Can I get a like? Can I get a like coming over from there? I just need one like right here. Can I get a like? <laughs> Shit. All right, 202, we good. Link is dropped. I got about 35 minutes. We got Corbin Phoenix. What's up, Corbin? I see you in here. Let me pin this shit. All right, channel is open. We got paid in full. Shout out, whatchamacallit, 10 piece. No biscuit in the Super Chat. So before the tape, it was, how come we won the money? After the tape, where the rest? Oh, the tape. Now it's Devin Haney was a kid. Now it's AB saved him and paid the money. So Dev versus King Rye, second L, 12 rounds, same as long. Damn. Yeah, yeah, slogan one. Touch your neighbor and tell him to hit the like button. <laughs> hey, I'm still in that slogan one. Just, slogan one, I'm the type of person, bro. If I get shit from somewhere, I let you know where i got it from so slogan one i'm letting you know right now moving forward as i ask people to hit the like button on this channel that is something that i will be saying bro <laughs> just 
I'm just keeping it real with you, dog. You get, hey, you get it, you get a motherfucking, hey, you know what? You get a wrench and shit. You get a wrench. You support the channel today too. You know what I'm saying? You get a wrench and shit. And I'm giving you fair warning. Don't be up, man. Ko stole my shit, man. Ko stole, man. He stole. Uh, listen, I'm telling you that I'm gonna do it because I think it's fire, bro. <laughs> I think that shit was fire. I like it. I like it. I'm gonna use it. Just, just so you know, I'm gonna use your shit. And I hope you be okay with it, bro. <laughs> I hope you be okay with it. All right, we got uh paid in full. We got hey, crown. Hmm. What's up, paid in full? Chill, chill, paid in full. What's up? Hey, crown jewel, since right, you eat, go ahead, turn, you can turn your camera off, crown jewel. Yes, yeah, definitely, right. definitely. Paid in full. Go ahead, talk to me. Bro. All right, so listen. So I think it was your last video, bro. Um, before you before you went live, man. I think you said something about um. Ryan was talking about Devin was cheating or some shit on steroids or some shit. But yeah. that shit don't bother y'all as boxing fans that this nigga is running with a well-known motherfucker that was out here cheating and shit. And then the nigga, I think you said something about the nigga said that he can, he can uh basically get around the motherfucking test and basically mean he could cheat still. Yeah. That shit don't bother motherfuckers as boxing fans like. I don't understand that. Like, what the what the fuck? Is like going I said, on? like go ahead. Like I don't I want to said, you off. Go ahead. No, yeah, you got it, bro. But like, like I said, bro, for me, I understand why it makes people look at him with a side eye, bro. I do, but I can't put a jacket on a young man that ain't never tested positive. So, cause, right. but, but I do understand where you're coming from. And like I said in the video, I understand the the notion of well, shit. If you hang around a bunch of drug dealers, motherfucker, gonna think you selling drugs. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If you, if you hanging around a bunch of people that's jack boys that's stealing and robbing folks, they're gonna think you're you stealing and robbing yeah, people too. So um, you know, Devin gotta understand that, his fans gotta understand that. But just me as a content creator, I think it's irresponsible for me having a young man that's been enrolled in Vita testing forever, that's never tested positive. I can't call him a drug cheat, bro. I wouldn't do that to him because um again i'll never get into my personal life but i've been accused of a lot of, of shit that i ain't done before and I, that shit don't feel good when people try to make right. you guilty by association and shit so i'm not gonna do it right. to him but i do understand where it's coming from um but but you can't you know maybe victor because we yeah. don't know victor Conti, you know what i'm saying maybe victor country really did change and now he want to just be the mr clean clean sports guy or whatever you know what I'm saying? maybe that's what he want to be but 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 my, my gut is telling me that that motherfucker my gut is telling me that motherfucker suspect in the bitch, Victor Country. So yeah, I, that's what, that's how I feel. I ain't gonna put no code on Devin, but yeah, I feel the same way, bro. I feel the same way. That's some suspect shit, though. If a nigga could tell you that he could, even though they got about a test and this shit, this nigga t still telling you he can get around that shit, bro. That shit is crazy, bro. That shit yeah. is crazy. And and but, you can't ignore the fact that his fighters are able to cut a lot of weight. Um and rehydrate back up that the people that's fucking with Victor Country like a lot of shit that they do over there. Maybe it's cutting edge shit and maybe everybody needs to get on snack because it's just working so well. Um, but you know, for every Devin, every Devin Haney and, and Floyd and um and Terrence Crawford, I mean the shit didn't work for Demetrius Andrade, so um <laughs> maybe he got a bad batch or some shit, but yeah, it, I don't know. It, it, it is what it is, bro. I don't I I can't I don't put too much weight in it because Cause that's a serious ass allegation. That's one of the ones that you need proof for, bro. You gotta, you gotta have proof for you yeah. try to put that on somebody. You know what I mean? So that, that's what I think, of, bro. Yeah. But uh, let me pass it around. Truth, what's up, man? What's up, Ko? Chilling, bro. Chilling. What you got for the man, show? Man, you gotta stop. You gotta stop this. You already know what I came here to talk about. Ain't no Tank and Frank the best fight at one thirty-five. Okay. What's the best fight? We have to, oh easy Loma and Kambosis <laughs> easily unless that's Shakur and more uh I will I'll give a cave a caveat the Shakur Moratala if that fight uh happens or is real then that I will give the slight edge just to be objective if I'm being truly objective serious? but Loma and Kambosis is number two you just cooked yourself and you don't even know it I'm hey, gonna come back is he serious. No, nah, yeah, he dead serious. He dead ass serious. Yeah, 100% serious. He, he serious. Yeah, the homie truth is the homie truth ain't playing at all. He just yeah. he's always in a good mood because his life is so good. But he playing. <laughs> he playing. Hey, Crown Jewel, yeah. Crown Jewel, what's up, man? Crown Jewel, what's up, bro? Talk to what, what's good, KO? I'm going to say man. something that you're not going to expect. 
and maybe it's me being a pessimist. Uh-huh. But Tank being that close to his fight weight is wearing me a little bit this early. Okay. And the reason why I say that is there is a such thing as overtraining, and there's uh-huh. a such thing as peaking too early. And because he has this newfound dedication and discipline, I'm hoping he doesn't overdo it. Um, I like that he's in the gym. I like that he's focused, but I hope I hope they're paying attention to where he's at in his development for the fight, and he doesn't peak too early. I've seen it far too many times where guys put so much pressure on themselves, and they really want to make a statement, and they extend camp a little too long. They get in shape a little too early, and when they do just that, they end up leaving the fight in the gym and peaking too early. Like I said, I don't want that to happen. I hope that's not the case because I'm a huge Tank fan, but it does worry me. I got you. That's a great. That's that's a great point, bro. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. I don't think you're being pessimist. You just you looking at it from a different perspective. What I will say is he got a lot of money and a lot of experts. So if that is something that happens to him, then that's his fault, bro. You're right. You're right. You know, I just hope it ain't, hope it ain't no it ain't no it ain't no excuses for no for no shit like that. Like if he overtrained or for some reason it ain't he ain't himself the night of the fight. That's no excuse, bro. Like that's that's part of your job is to make sure you're doing right. I think though. If done right, like so, that's the bad side of it, and you can you can cook on this and you can respond to this. The good side of it is is that if it's done right, that allows you to focus on only making sure you doing the best you can to be strong, to be sharp, to work on your skills, and not have to worry about a weight cut. Now you can actually build muscle, build strength, and then you can cut weight way easier when you only cutting maybe if four to seven pounds or some shit like that so there is a downside to it like you said but if they do this shit properly and he and he and he's in that bitch and 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 he peaks at the right time that shit can be a good thing too oh no it can be absolutely scary that's the flip side but i actually was going to do a video on, on both sides the positive and the negative the positive could be you're right if he's doing it right he has a nutritionist and you know i mean his strength and condition and his doctor is really paying attention to him and you know picking him up and then bringing him back down throughout the course of training, you're right. He could come out this motherfucker like a machine. You know what I mean? Because if what he's been in lackluster camps is any indication of what he can be, it could definitely be scary. So if, in fact, he hasn't been fight training and is just eating correctly and conditioning, and like I said, he doesn't get too high too soon, it can be great. It could be. It could be really, really a really big advantage. We can see a tank we never seen before. But I just always warn that being this early, you could have a flip side too. Of course, 100%. I'm hoping he comes in like you said. I'm hoping the professionals are paying attention. They're doing their job, and that he's not overdoing it. Because if if he is doing what you're saying, and they are being responsible about it, and the people that are around him are being honest with him, and and making sure he's not overdoing it. It's going to be the best performance of his career, and that's going to be scary for anybody else from 140 on down. Well, I got a third talking point for y'all. It could be he training hard. It could be he peaked too early. Or as Dankfather said, he did say he was looking for his crack pipe. So he could be coming Oh, on. shit. Dank, <laughs> Dank, come on. They say he's looking for a crack pipe. Dankfather, you ain't shit. Yeah, man. he said he's looking for his crack pipe because he was going to smoke Devin. Damn, they they say yeah, man. He might be on that crate. That's why he losing all that weight. You ain't shit, boy. You ain't shit for that. You still my homie though. We got a one who's on five piece. No biscuit in the super chat. Um, he said this motherfucker, this pooty tang voice. The fuck, <laughs> get the fuck on. Uh, a one who's on. We got Jonathan Jackson in the building. What's up, Jonathan? Talk to me, man. And then we opening up the panel for the smoke. What's up, though, bro? What's good? What's going on, Ko? Yeah, you, you you're a funny guy, man. Yo, I had to show the world you was a hater, Dank Father. Go ahead, Jonathan. I had to show the world your ass was a hater, man. You ain't you just pretending like you unbiased. You was a goddamn Tank Davis hater, hater, Dank Father. It's fucked up, man. I was up here taking up for Devin, not being a cheater, not being a drug cheat, and then you went and put that bullshit in my in my chat, bro. That's fucked up, man. Go ahead, Jonathan. You got it, bro. Hey, Kat, see, I, I ain't I ain't got no smoke. I just need you to explain to me like what is like weight have to do with confidence? Like I I, I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't get what you're trying to say there. So I make an analogy for you, like me, right? I drop my link every day. I don't know what people want to come up here and talk to me about. 
But if anybody wants to debate me, I'm here every day to debate. I've shown you guys that I go to other channels to debate. That if somebody's talking negative about me in any way, I'm going over there. I show a high level of confidence in my boxing knowledge. But then you have some content creators that do what? They block everybody that disagree with them. They never have anybody on their link. They always just a one man show. And the chat is filled with people that only agree with them. To me, that shows somebody that's maybe not as confident in their take. Now, I say that to say same thing for somebody that's looking to shrink down a whole bunch of weight. If you walk around at 165 and you're trying to make 135 or you walk around 150 and you're trying to make featherweight, you're looking for an advantage. You're looking to fight smaller guys so that you can have an advantage over them. Just don't punch as hard. That's yeah, what it really is. Yeah, juxtaposed to someone who's walking around at 165 fighting at middleweight. They showing, I don't give a fuck how big you is. I don't care how much weight you cut. Nigga, I cut these five pounds, I beat your ass. That's a higher level of confidence to me, bro. That's what I mean by that. Like, if you fight, if like Floyd Mayweather, high level of confidence. He was walking around 150, 152 for like the last five to seven years of his career. He probably could have easily got down to 140, fought easier fights. But no, nah, he was fighting at 147 against dudes that was naturally bigger than him. He didn't have to do that. He's Floyd. He could have fought whoever he wanted to, bro. He didn't have to fight Marcos Madonna after Marcos Madonna put on uh, a performance against Adrian Broner, who a lot of people thought was a Floyd Mayweather clone and shit. He fought Madonna two times, bro, as the smaller man. While Marcos Madonna did what? Walked around 165, big in the motherfucker, cutting down to 147, bro. It just shows that you, it shows me a fighter that's more confident in their skills. When they don't have to cut all that extra weight and they're not looking for advantages, that's what I mean by that, bro. All right, but all right, if you gonna say that, why why didn't Floyd just start his uh, career at one forty seven? Because he got bigger down there. Because he got bigger. He got Thank bigger. You. He got bigger as time went on. When he when he was fighting, when he turned pro as a young as a nineteen year old, I believe after the Olympics, I think it was 19, 20 years correct, old. Correct. Correct. When he turned pro, he was a much smaller man. Okay. Oh my God, he, he was a much smaller man when he turned. Yeah, right? yeah. No, Devin's Devin's one sixty five right now, cutting one forty. What are you talking about? He's growing with age, Kale. He can't, he can't, he can't fight it. It's the human body. Devin oh, been cutting since day off, one. He didn't start off as this big Goliath. I understand, but he is now, and he's still cutting. He's been in. He's been a professional fighter for a decade and moved up one weight class, bro. Is it is it bad to cut weight? I didn't say it was bad. I just showed why it is. I, I, I just it just shows that you, it just shows that you're not as confident. And like Crown Jewel just alluded to, you do that shit long enough, you go. You do that shit long enough, you're gonna run into a fight. You're not gonna have it because you because you just went to the well too many times. So cutting weight. Cutting weight jeopardizes your brain and your organs. That's a fact. So all the all the fighters that cut weight, it's that as just no. It, it depends. So some fighters, some, some professional fighters, some professional fighters cut eight to ten pounds. Some professional fighters cut, you know, five to seven pounds. Some cut fifteen to twenty. The more weight you cut, the more dangerous it is for you, bro. Because you're only you go you can go. They get, got medical research on this shit and everything. You can go look it up. They really say it's only safe. For you to really cut maybe like I think it's 10% of your weight or some shit like that. Anything that you cutting above that, it can be dangerous for you because now you start taking the water and the, and the weight and the fluids out your brain and shit. Exactly. And, that's what makes, and that's what makes people chinny, bro. That's why motherfuckers will, will come in that bitch and they used to be like a Miguel Burchell. It's a prime example. Big motherfucker, bro. Miguel Burchell, big, strong, fucking 130 pound. That motherfucker walk around like 155, 160. Running through shit like thirty some KOs in a row, he fucked around and went to the well too many times, and Oscar Valdez put that boy in the dirt, boy. And then ever since then, he his chin ain't been the same, cutting all that motherfucking weight. He tried to start moving up after that, but it was too late for him, bro. Hey KO, yeah, it's two more examples of that. Diego Corrales and Paul Williams both had granite chins, was cutting a lot of weight. Both of their chins dis disintegrated rapidly. But if anybody wants to know about the IBS rehydration clause, it's because of that. It's because their doctor did research 
that said it is unsafe to lose more than 10 pounds of water weight in a short period of time and try to put it back on. And anything more than 10 pounds of water weight is when you start to deplete the cerebral brain fluid in your brain. And then when you get hit, there's nothing to cushion and your brain slaps up against your skull, which is why it causes a lot of the brain bleeds. So that's why the yeah. IVF did the research and came up with the rehydration cloth. It wasn't to stop guys from getting big. It was to stop guys from losing so much water weight and putting their brains at risk. 100 percent and the other thing bro like you can just go look at go look at Devin haney making weight bro with all them towels and look at him at the weigh-in when they don't do the ceremonial shit and you can see his face sunken in and shit bro that shit ain't healthy bro all right okay Kale. so if cutting what is a disadvantage what does confidence have to do with it's not a disadvantage bro. yourself at a disadvantage if you're not, not putting it for the guys that perfect the if you can do it bro I'm if you're sure. able to do it it only becomes a disadvantage when something fucks up but if you're able to do it correctly and you have all the systems in place it can be a huge advantage for you bro and that's okay like he's not the only person to do it other fighters do it too but you can't ignore the fact that guys that walk around 20 to 25 pounds heavier than what they fight at they cut down because they're looking for an advantage, bro. And it's okay. I don't. I don't think size gives you an advantage in boxing. Okay. Yo, you said you said size don't give you an advantage no, in no, boxing. We see. We see. All right, bro. Smaller fighters. Yo. Yeah. What up? Can Are I, you? Can I speak to some concern that's doing um doing uh the history? Uh, an experience. Can I speak on experience in, on, around this subject? <laughs> yeah, <don't laughs> Go ahead, my, go ahead, Crown Jewel. Go ahead. We my listen. second, my second pro fight, I was undisciplined, right? So I found myself a day and a half before my weigh-in, sixteen pounds over my weight, right? Of course, I wasn't gonna pull out, so I decided I'll just dehydrate myself and make the weight. I did sixteen pounds in like thirty-four hours. Mm -hmm. Made the weight, participated in a fight, felt like shit. Won the fight, but felt like shit. Didn't tell anybody. I had difficulty breathing from the second round on, right? Mm -hmm. I'm an asthmatic, so I thought it was my asthma. Immediately after, I go to the doctor, get my asthma checked out. Asthma's fine, but my heart's not functioning correctly. Went through two, three months of going to see heart doctors in Thomas Jefferson Hospital in Philadelphia to get an answer I already knew, but I was too ashamed or embarrassed to say. My weight cut and dehydration stopped my heart from functioning properly. And I had them, like I said, doing all these tests, trying to figure out why when I knew why. I just didn't want to tell them that I took off 16 pounds of water weight in 34 hours. So that that's how dangerous that shit is. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, mean I, I can't speak to that, but what I what I speak to for you, Jonathan, is for every fight that you can name where a small fighter beat a big fighter, bro, there's a reason that the saying in boxing is the good big man beats the good little man, bro. Because most times, like, the numbers tell you that if two fighters are really good, usually the bigger person wins, bro. Devin Haney, Devin Haney, Devin Haney, Devin Haney and Lomachenko, two very good fighters who won the fight. Shakur Stevenson, Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez, two very good fighters who won the fight. Tank Davis and Leo Santa Cruz, two very good fighters who won the fight. They weren't, weren't bullying them. No one said it was bullying, but the size matter the fact that the fact that Shakur the fact that Shakur Stevenson had to reach over Oscar Valdez and he was bigger than him. And Oscar Valdez, when he got inside on him, he couldn't push Shakur around. That mattered. The fact that, that, that Lomachenko had a whole bunch of distance that he had to try to cover to get in on Devin Haney because Devin Haney was so much longer and bigger than him. That shit matters. The fact that Tank Davis could take Leo Santa Cruz's punches like it was nothing. But Leo couldn't take his shit. That shit matters, bro. That shit matters. It just is what it is. David, David, David Benavidez, bro. David Benavidez, bigger than Caleb Plant. Guess what? Caleb Plant was, was on to something. He was doing good, bro. He was doing really, really good. But David Benavidez was walking through his shit. And by the by the back half of that fight, he was fucking him up. Demetrius Andrade threw some good combinations early in the fight. Motherfucker was just too little, bro. <laughs> he was just too little. They, that shit felt like he was thumping Dave. They been to be there like, oh, for real? Like, all right, I'm just going to walk through your shit. K.O., you, you, like, you on, only walk. had to get that deep. Because all you got to say is, why do we have weight classes then? 
That's true too. When they invented the sport, they put weight classes. Why, if it didn't matter? We're talking about people that's in the, in the same weight classes as these guys. I'm saying they have no, they weight. How much they weigh doesn't doesn't uh, have any bearings on, okay, on the fight. Well, it's only been about 20, 22 years that you've been able to weigh in the day before the fight. If we go back to weighing in the day of the fight, that shit is over. They're not throwing their weight around like David Benavidez. If they make fighters start weighing in the day of the fight again, like New Jersey revisited back in 2005, this is over. This is not there wouldn't be there, there there'd be there wouldn't be a single fighter fighting in the weight class that they fighting in now, bro. Nope. There wouldn't be a single no, no one's favorite fighter. You name them, whoever they are, bro. Most of them would have to move up one, if not two, weight classes, bro. That's Some not, three. That's not how boxing is anymore. No, but I, but, I, but the point is that that just proves that motherfuckers ain't fighting in their true weight class, bro. Exactly. exactly. Motherfuckers are punching now. They said they said when they was doing that, that was actually uh more unhealthy. That's not true. Same day weighing. They said more. It's not unhealthy. All you don't motherfuckers are still trying weight. to cut a bunch of weight, but if you if you losing if you losing three to five pounds to fight, you ain't that ain't shit. That ain't shit, bro. Losing three to five pounds, that ain't shit. But the motherfuckers that was losing ten to ten to fifteen pounds a day of yeah, that's fucking with them up. That's that didn't start. That didn't start till the day before, and I can remember hearing and out of Emmanuel Stewart's mouth when they when they started that in New Jersey. He said, "Oh, I love to fight here because I can put twenty to thirty pounds on Michael Moore or Gerald McClellan overnight." The those type of guys that had the money and the assets, they loved it because it's an advantage. Now you're a regular blue collar fighter that can't afford a nutritionist and to pay for private IVs and all that. He can't put twenty pounds on overnight. He can't drink enough water to put on 20 pounds overnight. He drowned himself. That's another thing. The only people that can really do it the way Devin is doing it is those that are affluent because your regular everyday fighter can't afford to do that. Not safely. We got Dion Gale. What's up, Dion? You ain't saying nothing, bro. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just trying to catch up on the topic. Man, we're mm. talking about a lot of shit today. You can cook on whatever you want. Hey, y'all see that interview with Tim Bradley? Yeah, I saw some of it. What you what, what part you talking about? What part you what part you think that he didn't say it was wrong? Nah, just tell me what you want to talk about on it, bro. I only saw a part of it. I saw when he asked him about uh his toughest fight or who who the hardest puncher he faced was. That's the main thing. I that's once I heard that, I just kind of kept it moving. So I only saw a little bit of it, bro. I didn't watch the whole thing. Uh, he just what you what, what do you say what do you, what do you say that we need to talk about what what's up he said just complete completely honest like Canelo just ducked him. you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do shit about it or nothing he's like you got to laughing and shit like Canelo ducking and he said it's just a new generation of just prize money and shit you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and he said. And then the key question was, do you think boxing would die? And he brought up a good ass point and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like with the heavyweights and stuff, not, not having an American heavyweight champion. But if we do get a heavyweight champion, it'll be just some, something like similar. Like he said, like, remember back in the day when Larry Holmes was the champion and, you know what I'm saying? People thought it was going to die and bam, you know what I'm saying? It ran back up. I mean, I hear, I, I hear that shit. Based on on what you said, though, I disagree. I think, I think boxing will be just fine. American heavyweight or no American heavyweight, they just got to do what every other sport seems to figure out. Except for boxing, you just got to give the fans the product that they asking for. You got yeah. to find a way to give people the product that they asking for, and the the sport will be just fine. Because at the end of the day, the only thing, the only difference. What's up, KQKC? I see you in the building. The main difference between boxing and, and the other sports that, that we may watch, whether it's UFC or football, basketball, football, baseball, tennis, whatever it is, golf, they have a format in place where the fans the fans win by getting the product that the fans want. And if boxing can figure out a way to do that, then it'll be fine regardless if it's an American heavyweight, if the UK heavyweight is the best, or if the Americans run welterweight, but the Japanese one one run one twelve, but the Mexicans run featherweight. It ain't gonna matter, bro. 
if people are getting the fights that they want. If that was a regular occurrence, unifications, mandatories, big name fighters fighting each other, that's what the sport needs, bro. It don't matter about a heavyweight champion. So I disagree with him on that. Hey man, for some reason, I think I think Devin and Ryan. It's not gonna do like crazy numbers, but I think people go tune in just to see if Ryan make it. Yeah, they're gonna tune in. They're gonna tune in for free. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna have to because you know what I'm saying he ain't taking this shit serious and they're they gonna tune in, they gonna tune in on that fire stick, bro. Yeah, and, and I have seen okay, I can't, I can't the one video. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna oh, speak yeah. on that when you when we get a I, minute, I, KO. I, I can't believe that I seen the video where Man, it was clear as day, my fucking Derek. Derek James getting frustrated with Ryan, bro. Yeah, Derek James definitely deserved better, but um, he getting frustrated. The, the, the fight selling like that shit ain't selling, bro. Motherfuckers like watching train wrecks for the free. <laughs> they hey, like, hey. like watching the train wreck. Like, look, look at what you just said. Now let Crown Jewel cook on it. But look at oh. what you just said. Look at what you just said, bro. You said you think motherfuckers gonna tune in because. They want to see if Ryan show up. That's why you think people don't tune in, bro. When that is why people are tuning in, they not paying for that shit. And I'll show y'all again, because maybe some people in the chat weren't here, and then I'll let y'all cook on this. Like, I don't care about Kanye West showing up to Ryan Garcia live. I don't care about motherfucking Ryan Garcia gaining followers on social media. This is what I care about, bro. This is what I care about right here. This is StubHub. All they got all their tickets available. In the last three hours, they've added 61 more tickets and they've sold three of them. Now I'll leave StubHub and I'll go to the next biggest site, which is Vivid Seats. Oh Vivid Seats. We'll go to Vivid Seats. Vivid Seats got every fucking section available too. On Vivid Seats. We'll so leave it. We'll leave Vivid Seats and we'll go to Seat Geek. Okay? But, we'll go to Seat Geek. We'll see what Seat Geek talking about. But why are you saying this, okay? Every fucking seat in the house available in every fucking section. I leave Seat Geek and I'll go to the one that the actual site is using, which is motherfucking Ticketmaster, the main hey, site. What was all this for? I'll That's go to what that. So, imagine, if it sell out, what, what was all this for? On motherfucking ticket mask, <laughs> every fucking seat is available. Okay, okay, okay then, KO. So why, yes. what, we a month out and they ain't moving their tickets, bro. Hey, KO, uh, 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 exactly, but at the same time, KO, the they about to put David, they about to put David on fucking Tank's car. Okay. So how much do you think Dave is gonna bring to that car? A lot. That's smart promoting. I know that. I'm just saying though, it's still gonna show that Tank ain't doing it himself. Nobody does it they self. You supposed to give your stars a good undercard. Okay, so after this fight, you're not supposed to you you would rather you would rather Tank Davis and them pull the Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia and have the co-main event show up to the press conference. Not know who the fuck the co-main event is fighting. Have the co-main event guy get up in front of the goddamn stage and tell the world I'm here and I'm ready, just in case one of these motherfuckers don't show up. You rather you have have that. That. You rather, we don't even know. We don't even but know who's Devin and Ryan's card. But KO, you just want the fight to do bad. Why? No, I don't. Why? It seemed like you. It seemed like it seemed like you do. I but can't, bro. The thing, the thing when, see, this is this is my problem with y'all, bro. This is my main problem with some of y'all, bro. You can go back, you can go back in time when Devin and Regis was selling out in the bay. I was like, yo, that shit is selling. They selling good. They sold thirteen thousand tickets. It's gonna do. I hope it do a good live gate. I love the motherfucking way that they promoting this fight. Y'all didn't say that shit to me then. Y'all know that y'all know Ryan Garcia and Golden Boy fucking up this promotion. Why y'all get mad at me for telling y'all the truth? But you y'all know, that. Y'all know but damn well. A month out from the fight, every site got everything available. Every one of them. 
But you still yeah, want to. What, what is all this for? If it sells out, like, you don't even know if it's not or if it is. This is all speculation. All I know is Devin go win. What's next? I can only tell you right now it ain't selling. I hope it sell out. I mean, all I know right is Devin go win. Like, how many say? How many they said it when they sold it or when it first came out? Like, Devin go win. So no matter what. What's next? Sixteen hundred. So I'll answer both of y'all. I'll answer both of y'all questions. Then I'll let Crown Jewel go. The guy said they had sold sixteen hundred tickets. To answer your question, Jonathan, and then to answer your question, Dion Gale, if Devin wins and this shit flop, he gonna be looking for a deal, and motherfuckers gonna be trying to pay him less because his fight just flopped. No, we want Tank. Two of them flopped. What? We want Tank. This shouldn't have no bearing on if he gets <laughs> right now. This is, this is hilarious. That, that oh, oh, oh my god! Over you guys. Say it again. Go crown two. Go crown two. I want to touch on that Tim Bradley interview. I didn't see it, but I heard what y'all said. And when he talked about um, he was talking about he didn't know if boxing was dying. I'm disappointed. I'm always disappointed in him, but I'm really disappointed in him saying that st that statement because he should be more educated as he works for one of the big broadcasting companies that covers boxing. Boxing doesn't have a popularity problem. It's as popular as ever. All the top young fighters are hanging with all the hip hop artists and all the stars are coming to the fights. Boxing is just as popular as it always been. It doesn't have a popularity problem as a pirating problem. Unless and until they find a way to keep people from stealing the fights they're going to have this issue unless they can come up with the deals they had of old where the abcs and, and, and the, the networks to give them money to air the fights and sell commercial space as long as we had this pay-per-view model we got to stop people from stealing and that's the only way boxing is going to see great numbers again but it's not a lack of popularity you got three million youtube channels talking about boxing every day and they're all watching these fights they're just watching them for free so if all the people talking about boxing were actually watching by or paying for boxing then boxing will be doing greater numbers than it ever has. So all these people that keep saying boxing is dying, boxing is boxing that, boxing is still the highest paid combat sport athletes in the world. Uh, when it comes to how much money you make in a night, still one of the highest paid athletes, period, in the world. And it's still plenty popular. The problem is, like I said, internet security has not kept up with thieving, and they don't have a way to stop piracy. If they stop piracy, boxing is very much still alive. 100 percent 100 I, I i agree with that, that. i mean pay-per-view numbers really don't even mean anything for real for real. well if they go back to the model like i said where nbc and abc and those networks were airing fights on saturday and sunday mornings and selling commercial ads like they do the nfl games then they didn't have to do pay-per-view the networks were paying millions of dollars because they're selling commercial speed the problem happened when they locked don king out of hbo and he went to the tvko method that's what happened when they locked Don King and Mike Tyson away from HBO. And for a short period of time, they had to come up with their own way of making money. Pay-per-view became the model. When pay-per-view became the model, they made a mistake and exposed how much money could be made. Because the fighters and promoters had no clue what the networks were making when they were just fronting the money and handling everything. But when fighters and promoters found out how much money was in it, once they started doing it themselves and, and, and having pay-per-view, of course they didn't want to go back to that model. And the networks got over for so many years, they don't want to bend and start sharing more of the money. They'd rather not have boxing to share the money with the fighters and the promoters. So that's where we're at now. That's why HBO and Showtime are out of boxing, because there was a time when they can put up a small amount of money and keep all of the back end. Once now mm -hmm. Heyman came in and showed his fighters, like, no, you need some of the sponsorship money. You need some of the back end money. You need, you need some of all of the events money, not just a purse. That's when networks started saying the hell with that. We out of this business. We can't rob these men no more. Hey, hey KO, you always talking about people owe people to lies and shit. Al Heyman told the biggest lie. Free boxing. You gotta hold him accountable. There was free boxing when he started PBC. He changed his mind, bro, because they wasn't getting no money. It was on Fox. It, it was on Fox and ESPN. Again. Be and the networks, the networks got greedy. They sell commercial but, space every time they air fights, but they don't want to share that money 
with the PBC in the finals. You have to, you have, you have to make money, bro. Al Heyman, because his concert background, knows all the money that comes in. So when he realizes they weren't willing to break the pie down, he said, all right, cool. We're going to do it on our own. We'll do pay-per-view. That's because the TV networks are greedy. And as soon as he did that, the TV network said, the hell with that. We don't want, them, want nothing to do with boxing no more. Why? Because they don't have an 80-20 split in their favor anymore. That's why. Man, I'll hang the panties, niggas. Motherfucker, buku money up front, and then they getting shelled. They don't get bu- uh, buku they money up front. They get small money up front. He actually, he actually played the, he actually played the lowest guarantees, bro. He partners Nuh-uh. with them. He gives them almost nothing up front, and they get, they the get their money on the back, on the back end, end. bro. What are you talking They're, about? Al Heyman's fighters, if, if y'all are into hip hop, Al Heyman's fighters are like independent rappers. They're signed to themselves most of the time. He's an advisor. Most of them aren't with a promotional company. They're promoting themselves. So instead of him guaranteeing them money up front, which is nothing but a loan against the profit, he's saying, I'm not going to give you all a loan against the profit. I'm going to give you this low $1 million guarantee, but I'm going to let you partner with me instead of working for me, and you're going to share in all of the revenue, not just this flat fee that all these other promoters have been, been screwing y'all and paying y'all throughout the history of boxing. All right. Look, man, we got to end it right there, bro. I got to run, man. Shout out to everybody that came up here. I will be live again Appreciate tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Y'all go check out Crown Jewel Boxing. Y'all go check out everybody in, in the chat that got channels, man, and support their channels and the grind that they put in. And I appreciate y'all, man. Everybody um, have a great night. We'll be back live tomorrow night. Y'all take it easy. Catch y'all next time, man.